Today, today it is time for the second StarCraft 2 Loco TV viewer tournament. This is something that's been in the works for a little while. We did a viewer tournament. Well, at this point, it's a good couple of months ago, but we did one a little while ago. A lot of people really enjoyed it, so we figured, let us go ahead and do another one. Now, I know what you're thinking, Loco, last time around, there was no price, really. I mean, you got a subscription to my channel and obviously the glory of being the winner, right, of the viewer tournament. This time around, however, look at this. Does it get any better <laughs> than this high quality, made out of plastic, three euro trophy that I had 3D printed a couple of weeks ago? I know, yes, I feel like you guys' reaction is indeed appropriate. If the winner of the tournament wants it, I will be shipping this to their homes. Obviously, this is uh, gonna be a tournament that's just for fun. We're trying to just have a good afternoon over here on the Saturday. I'm really looking forward to it. This time around, we have made a couple of changes. So, the biggest complaint that we had last time was that a lot of players signed up for the event and they got absolutely trashed in the very first round. <laughs> so, you know, last time it was randomized and basically there was a chance that maybe you were a Bronze League hero, you went up against someone in Diamond League in the very first round and you were basically just playing survival the entire time. Uh, so this time we've made some changes. Players are grouped up in groups of 8 players, ranked by their MMR, so by their skill level in game. And we're going to be doing round Roman groups. So everyone in every single one of the eight player groups is going to play one game against everyone else in their groups. So hopefully that should be a relatively fair games. And from there on out, we're going to do a bracket as well. Should be a lot of fun. This time around, though, there's no limitation. So last time around, we had players only up to Diamond League. But I know for a fact that apparently uh, about 15 minutes ago, or about a half hour ago, a Grandmaster player signed up. So we've got our winner! Yay! Congratulations to Iba! Wait, no, we gotta play the tournament first. We gotta play the event first. <laughs> but I'm just saying, okay, like, I feel like it's gonna be an uphill battle. But it should still be a lot of fun. You can see the groups right over here. The games that are gonna be played right from the get-go. And indeed, Mr. Iba. I'll talk about him a little bit more in, uh, in a little bit. I'm sure we're gonna get some of his games on the stream as well. But, um... Yeah, look, <laughs> 4700 MMR versus 5600 MMR. This is the highest seated group right over here, but it's gonna, it's gonna be a tricky one. Shout out, by the way, to uh, Mr. Nuke, Mr. Fluffy Waffle, and Drone Rush that have been uh, setting all of this up behind the scenes. Just like last time, I am doing absolutely nothing other than talk about video games. Alrighty, guys, here we go. Game number one of the event. I, by the way, have no idea how long this is gonna take. Um, since we are doing a group stage and then we are gonna be going into like, you know, a bracket as well This is definitely gonna take a little while I'm expecting it to take the majority of the stream Maybe a little bit longer than normal, but we'll find out together as the day progresses I will be solo casting Pretty much all of it, if I'm not mistaken Unless someone is magically gonna join me at some point in the future Um, so I do wanna like At the very least take the commentary down a, a notch just because I might you know, I might fall asleep if I if I don't, or either that my, my voice is going to be destroyed. Or... Anyways, anyways, anyways. Guys, it's time. So spotting here in the bottom left corner of Hardware. In game number one, a best of one series, of course. We have none other than Mr. Bones. And then his opponent in the opposite corner. I mean, <laughs> I want to be an unbiased caster, and I want to say that I am not cheering for anyone in particular. But I have been coaching this man for several months. Actually, for probably like, I don't know. I don't know exactly how long, but it's been a good while. We are looking at none other than Uber Noob's main base, and Uber Noob is also known under the name of Malin. Now, if you guys who have been watching the stream for some time, you may remember Malin. We usually do coaching once a month. Recently, we've also been playing some two versus twos in Age of Empires 4. That's been a lot of fun. But yeah, I've been uh, I've been trying to teach him how to play the different matchups. But he mentioned already to me just now that he is he's located on the west coast in the U.S. If I'm not mistaken, and we're doing this at 2 p.m. over in Central Europe. It's not the best of times. I think it's like 6 in the morning or something where he's located and he didn't sleep. So if he manages to make it past the first round, it's going to be a very long day. But, New uh, subscriber I mean, I'm cheering for him. Oh, it's 5 a.m. where he's located? For some extra tea to maintain the voice. Thank you very much, Spatula Dog. Yeah, I do have myself a little bit of coffee, so. We've got ourselves a cheeky little 12 pool. Ooh, could have been GG, guys. You see that? No, not quite. But I feel like the Zerklings could have probably snuck into the base. 
It is a very quick Zealot right here from Mr. Bones, followed up as well with a Nexus. And he's splitting up the links right now, which is exactly what you want to be doing. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to this, man. I've been looking forward to this for a while. Mr. Bones forgot the second pylon. One of the reasons why I've been teaching people, and I know Protoss players won't be appreciating this all too much, but one of the reasons why I have been teaching a lot of Zerg players to 12 pool in this matchup is because, especially in Diamond League, I've learned, um, apparently basically everything is cheese. At least like half of the games are a Cannon Rush or a Proxy 4 Gate or anything along those lines. And the 12 pool is a, a pretty good defensive opener, even though it is something that can do a lot of damage as well on the other side of the map. If Malon can somehow, some way, manage to secure, I guess Uber Noob right here, can ma manage to secure right here to kill that Cybercore, that would be amazing for him. Yeah, he is going to be able to get that snipe. This is already a fantastic situation. Is this going to be the first game of the event, guys? So, I just want to emphasize that the 12 pool is a macro build. It really is, okay? Look, there's a natural taken, there's queens and stuff, third queen's coming up, he's going... It's, it's not a cheese, okay? It's not meant to win the game. You can make it a cheese, but the version that Uber Noob right here is going for isn't really that cheesy. He's a little uncertain as to what to do. But yeah, seems to me like target firing down the Nexus is not even a terrible idea. <coughs> Does this make me look bad or like... I've been teaching people macro builds for like a decade. And this is where we, where we end up, huh? The problem is, right? When you, um... When you um, lose the Cybercore, you have to restart it up before you can start the tech structure. So we did not actually see a Stargate, we didn't see a Robo facility, we didn't see much of anything. And because of that, our Protoss player is already incredibly delayed. Now luckily Malin here is making it better for his opponent by already having 800 minerals in the bank. So that helps out quite a bit. Good guy Malin didn't want to win too hard, which is nice for him. He is going to start spending some of that money right now as well. Obviously, while you're microing these links, there's a lot of other things that need to be done too, but at this point, eh, I think that Protoss is going to be able to stabilize, but the economical advantage here for uh, for the Zerk is obviously huge. Alright, so the follow-up. It's going to be a Twilight Council right here from Mr. Bones. Loco, is this commentary or is it roasting? <laughs> so, for those of you that haven't seen viewer-submitted games in a while on the YouTube channel, once upon a time... I was being very nice to people that sent me replays. I was like, okay, so he's trying to do this, but it wasn't working out perfectly for him. Ah, oh, that's a shame. I hope he can do better next time. These days, over the last couple of years, it's slowly spiraled into Loco is just being a total douchebag for... Oh, God. I don't think you want to put the Dark Shrine underneath. Okay, the Overlord. <laughs> Anyways, I, I, have been, uh, I have been a little bit ne less nice over the last few years. And for some reason, a lot of people seem to really like it. We are, we are getting a ton of games submitted all of the time. To the point where, uh, yeah, apparently there's uh, a lot of people that, you know, submit games for me to make fun of. Which is pretty good. Yeah, I'm slowly evolving into, like, Harstam meets Winter. That's a misclick. Did, hold up. He just killed the pylon that was... I didn't even... <laughs> Wait, there was... Wait, no! Oh my god, Mr. Bones! So what you gotta keep in mind, right, is that these are not just regular Diamond League games. These are also players that aren't used to being casted, right? So these players are in Diamond League. But, um... Yeah, obviously it's very different to have your game casted on a live stream than when you are playing all by yourself. The pressure is definitely significant, and I know a lot of people are gonna play significantly worse when they know that I'm watching their game. And when they know that there's hundreds of people watching this and probably thousands at some point as well on the YouTube channel. Malan going for the second phase in this attack. The only problem with this, guys, is that uh, he's doing this not against the Protoss who's gone for a third base. So this is very specifically, like the Queen Walk that is, a counter to someone who's going for a very quick third base off of a Stargate opener. Now, we don't have a Stargate opener, and we don't have a third base, but luckily here for Mr. Bones, he has no idea what's going on, and he's still gonna make it. That being said, the Dark Shrine at this point is done. Dark Templar are being warped in, defensively at home, and there's no detection with this army right here of Uber Noob. So this is about to be really silly. Yeah, look, now Protoss accidentally scouts it. 
Did Malin see that? He should see the little shimmer. He has no detection at home. He has a lair, and he's droning behind it. Uh, Technically speaking, Mr. Bone should be able to hold on. Assuming he actually... Uh, okay, there's a spore crawler starting up. Yeah, he's thinking about it right now, but he needs overseers. All right. Here we go, guys. After a phenomenal 12 pool. We've got Dark Templar in the bases. Now, Dark Templar, amazing offensively. Not that bad defensively either. The Queen's now already in a little bit of trouble. This is where the panic starts kicking in right here for our Zerk. He decides to go back home with the Roaches and Ravagers. 25 drones have already fallen. Ooh, and what was a very promising start right here for our American. I've got a feeling that this is gonna be game over. I did manage to get the kill on the third base. I've got a feeling the Queens probably shouldn't have been able to kill all of that. So much for not dying to stupid stuff. This is a theme in the coaching session. Yeah. Our main goal is to try and not die to stupid stuff. Mr. Bones, after canceling his own Dark Shrine, has still not managed to deal a lot of damage on the other side of the map. Now, there are Overseers available. No Overlord speed, though, so these Overseers are very slow. A couple of the units from the Zerk have also been allowed to go back home. I think you gotta go clean them up. This is still playable. The Zerk army here is way bigger than that of the Protoss. But I think at this point, uh, Uber Noob is probably uh, playing with a heartbeat of 180. <laughs> StarCraft 2 is all about crisis management, right? Mr. Bones is like, you know what? Those Dark Templar are doing quite well. Let me go ahead and put up a Dark Shrine at home and go into the, the Shadow Stride upgrade too. Okay. Good guy, Dark Templar. Yeah. <laughs> Our creep tumors are under attack. Good guy, Dark Templar. Couple more DTs though, ready to go. They're gonna be heading on over towards that third base. This time around though, there is indeed a spore crawler, a couple of spines as well. I think if we were to do once to, we could go across the map because Mr. Bones has complete completely forgotten how to macro. Mr. Bones currently sitting at 1700 minerals. This game is becoming physically painful, guys. It's only our first match of the day. Here's the entire Zerk train going all the way back home. Third base acquired again for the Protoss. And now the Lara is going to go down as well. At the cost of four Dark Templar, though. Oh, no. Never mind. <laughs> oh. How are you guys feeling, guys? How are you all feeling? Hold up. Let me see if I can get the chat on the stream as well. How are you all feeling about this, uh... This very first... You, you'll have to be my co-caster, okay? Since I'm gonna be all by myself, I think. It already actually hurts. Pain.mp3. Emotional damage. Looks just like my games. Yeah. Let me go grab a bag of painkillers. All right. Shout out to Mr. Bones, by the way, for not playing a Stargate opener. I mean, obviously, he was kind of thrown off with his build, and apparently his favorite unit is the Archon. But this is, uh, good stuff. Yeah, at this point, I think the Zerk has been so far delayed that this army is nowhere... Yeah, it's not going to do anything. I mean, it is very, very Archon heavy, but Archons aren't particularly bad either against Roaches and Ravagers. They're not great, but... They're obviously very expensive units, and they do a lot of damage. Good force fields. Nicely done right there by Mr. Bones. I think in our very first game today, guys, we have Mr. Uber Noob snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. It's impressive, but someone's got to do it. Nice work. Got to bow out and get coffee. Sorry, I failed you, loco. GG. It's a loco tradition, yes, to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Very good comeback right there from Mr. Bones, getting a little bit lucky. But hey, a win is a win. GG's. Honestly, we should just blame loco's coaching. I agree. I feel like that is not a bad idea. Anyways, the first games have already been played. As you can see, a lot of 1-0s right from the get-go. So Shren is indeed in the same group as Uber Noob. 
So Shren is the other person I've been coaching a lot recently. We actually did a coaching session at the end of yesterday's live stream. So I think we're going to be seeing Uber Noob maybe go up against Shren again later. That would be pretty fun. Pokelex is playing. Also someone I've coached in the past. Apparently he went 1-0 against Madman. A lot of names I recognize though. That's awesome. Is Yorono here as well? For some reason I didn't see Yorono. Oh, Yorono is here. Sorry. Sorry. I missed it. So Yorono, of course, the winner of the very first viewer tournament. Don't watch me, Loco. <laughs> he lost against Red Flash, who also played in the first one. Alrighty. Our second game of the tournament. Well, many games have already been played, but the second one that I'm casting. First off, right here in the bottom left hand corner of 2000 Atmos, we have none other than Perseus. And then his opponent, the challenger. The tournament favorite. Yeah, they're playing blue versus blue. Not particularly convenient. Anyways, we are looking at none other than Eba's main hatchery. Now, I was going to save this until a little while later, but since there is an Eba game to cast right now, I guess we'll jump into it right away. Do you guys want to feel insignificant for a little bit? Do, do you want to feel like everything you've done up to this point in your life wasn't really that impressive after all? Right, so here's the thing. Eba currently holds the world record of being the youngest player ever to make it to Grandmaster League. He managed to beat Raynor's record. Raynor held it at like 12 years and like something amount of days. And this record was broken some time ago by Iba. At the age of 11 years and 345 days, he became the world's youngest player ever to make it into Grandmaster League. The guy is like 5.6k MMR, currently 12 years old. It is... It's, it's, it's kind of wild, okay? Like this is... Talent is a very real thing in StarCraft 2, and it's something that is practically unheard of. When I think about what games I was playing when I was 12 years old, I was just trying to get 99 fire making in RuneScape, and that was really about it. But yeah, Mr. Eba, steadily climbing through the ranks. Like, making Grandmaster League is one thing, right? So you can reach Grandmaster League at like 4.9k MMR or so at the beginning of a season. But Eba, I think, right now is sitting at like 5.6k. Which is like, I think low tier pro gamer becomes, or is, is probably at like 6.2, 6.3, 6.4k MMR-ish. And Eba seems to be improving at a rate of like 600 MMR a year. So, just something to keep in mind. We'll see where he's going to be at in a couple of years from now. Uh, but he is by far the highest MMR in this tournament. So, I don't think anyone would be all too surprised if this trophy is going to be making its way all the way towards the United Kingdom. Not that far, so at the very least, that will save me in shipping costs. Either way, Perseus, yeah, going for a proxy Stargate. Now, I don't know how to feel about this proxy Stargate. I'll be honest with you guys. Sure, it's going to be unscouted. But, like, is this rush distance really faster? It's a little bit faster. Like, the distance the Oracle has to fly is going to be a little bit closer. Especially if the third base of Iba would have been taken over here. <laughs> yeah, I don't like this proxy location. <laughs> this proxy location is kind of bad. Anyways, I uh, pro props right here to Perseus for at the very least giving something a try, though. You gotta do something, right? Eba's not even bothering scouting. So there is an over- or sorry, there's a, uh, a stalker right here shooting at the overlord. Which is fair enough. I think Perseus, by the way, is 4.8k MMR. Is this Cobblestone? Oh, is that his name? Okay, I didn't realize that. Uh, I think he was previously the highest ranked person that signed up for this event and then uh, Iba joined in on the last couple of uh... <laughs> never mind guys whatever is going on forget all about it I thought it was going to be a quick oracle proxy or something along those lines uh, there's a second st ah, okay I'm a little bit concerned that Iba will sniff out that something's not quite right here in about a minute because he's going to recognize that there hasn't been a, a unit coming out of the Protoss' base. And usually when that's the case, you start running Zerklings around the map. All he needs to do is just look at this. But obviously this is something that can definitely work out. Yeah, Percy is just trying to go for a bit of a cheeky one. He's shown the Twilight Council as well to the Overlord. This is a huge indication that it's a Dark Templar opener because there's nothing researching in the Twilight Council. And why otherwise would you make one of those? So it does force out Spore Crawlers. Some additional Zerklings here as well. Not really that much anti-air. This could actually work out. 
Look at the Zorklings, though. Yeah. So this is what I mean, right? Zorklings are going around the map already, but they're not checking the corners. Look at the APM, by the way. <laughs> Average of about nine buttons a second. Just, you know, take that for what it's worth. Kobo is built differently. Okay. We'll see how it goes. Ay, ay, ay. All right. This is when he figures it out. When do you commit here as the Protoss player? There's already six queens out, five Void Rays currently, and three Spore Crawlers. Very good scout right there by Eba, by the way. Recognizing that, w that things weren't quite right. And at this point, all he needs to do is just defend, right? So he's already got the economical advantage. This could have been a disaster if the Zerg player wasn't paying attention to it, right? And suddenly, like, two dozen Void Rays show up. Or even a dozen, right? Then all of a sudden you can be caught off guard. But this should be a, this should be a pretty comfortable position right now for Eba. Obviously, Void Rays are still very fast and you still have to respect them even when you have them theoretically countered. At some point you're gonna have to split up the queens and stuff if the Voids go over in this direction and you're gonna have to defend both the third and the main base. But so far this is a very clean game right here. By the Zerg. Now obviously on the back of this there's not a, a whole lot of economy. But there is a third nexus. It's in the most likely location, I guess. Other than the conventional third base. Yeah, so this is the tricky part. This is where the game gets harder for Zerg. Because the Void Race can poke in between the third and the main base. He did connect the main base right there with Creep. But he's forced to split up the Queens here. So this could definitely still be dangerous, though. This is one of those things where Zerk players like myself tend to get salty because you're like, he can just go in between everything and just do everything perfectly and I have to split my units. Buff queens, please. Okay, now maybe maybe buffing queens would not be the correct answer. Pathogen glance is a follow-up. All right, we're going into infestors. He hasn't picked up, by the way, on the fact that there is another nexus in the top left. I think that's a bit of an ambitious fourth base. Um, the issue you run into, right, as a Protoss player here, is that your main and your natural are gonna run dangerously low about 10 minutes into the match. So I guess it makes sense to see uh, a third base. It's just that at this point, Protoss hasn't, uh, or Zork Rotter hasn't picked up on that one just yet. Yeah, so I know the top of the line Zerg players have been using up to three hotkeys for their queens recently. <laughs> He's rallying in probes? Are you kidding me? Where's that one going then? That one's going the other way? Uh, I liked a lot about this, but it's starting to become a bit of a meme now, right? Anyways, there is a, uh, a disruptor follow-up here as well from our protos. Obviously, Disruptors are fantastic, but they can't one-shot Queens. A lot of Transfuses available, and Perseus is starting to turtle up very nicely here. Considering our Zerg here, though, is like 800 MMR above the Protoss, this is a very impressive game so far by him, right? Like this... I, I kind of expected it to be a one-sided stomp, if I'm being brutally honest with you, but... Uh, New subscriber detected. Yeah, so far, not bad. Fungal growth now available here for the Zerk. So those Void Rays have to be extra careful. Thank you, by the way, Ceramic, for the four months. Or Ceramic. We're going into a Bailing Nest, plus two Missile, while also going Spire. Yeah. The reason right now is that Eva's thinking, wait a second, what if this is going to be like a full-on Skytals transition? He has seen one Disruptor, but usually when there's smoke, there's fire, right? There's usually going to be like carriers and stuff as a follow-up too. Encountering carriers with just queens and infestors is a little tricky to do. Neural Parasite is coming up? Alright. Sorry. Was that beautiful though? I think I should redo all of the songs. Oh god. In the StarCraft universe. Da na 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 na. Da da na. Alright. Anyways, yeah, this is not really a base that's attackable anymore, right? This is definitely not a base that can easily be attacked. 
Carriers indeed are going to be joining the battlefield. There's even a fourth base right over here, up and running as well. It is spotted here by the Zerk player, but honestly, this is starting to make me a little bit anxious. So look at the unit comp here that Eba is playing, right? He's going into Infester, Viper, Corruptor, Queen, Zerkling, Baneling, Brute Lord. Uh, like, he's basically getting every single spellcaster that Zerk has, and units that all need a specific hotkey. It's very strong, if my crowd correctly. Like, this is basically the way that, like, you know, a Serral plays this sort of matchup. The only problem is that, at least whenever I give this a try, I fat finger my hotkeys, and at some point, everything dies. Anyways. That's one way of dealing with it. Just don't suck at the game, guys. Just, just have, you know, 10 buttons a second. L literally there for a bit. Now, this is genuinely one of the hardest things to do in uh, the current meta for Zerk. Microing these units correctly, and after years of trying, I can't. I've really tried, but I just can't pull it off, man. It's cool to see that apparently someone who is literally less than half my age is apparently doing it, yeah, pretty smoothly. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not old, you're old. Stop saying I'm old. No, very impressive stuff. There's actually a bunch of really good young players in StarCraft 2. Like, for a while there, it was kind of like... Like, Raynor and Clem were, like, the, the most promising players, right? And, obviously, they turned out to be pretty good. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! <laughs> that was beautiful! Oof, dude. All right. Well, uh, that that's the nail in the coffin. GG, yeah. He neuroparasited one of the opponent's disruptors and then blew up the disruptors with the disruptors. You know that thing that Dark has been doing against Terran players where he neuroparasites the ghosts to then EMP the rest of the ghosts? It's kind of like this, but then, you know, on steroids. <laughs> I've never seen that before. That was insane. <laughs> so good. Anyways, there it is. That was a sick, that was a sick game. I guess I have an image for my YouTube thumbnail. It's always tricky to uh, find what kind of thing I want to put on the YouTube thumbnail. What kind of title I want to give my YouTube videos. But that was pretty much perfect. Eva, that was a beautiful game. I don't know if you're listening by now to the stream. But, uh... Very impressed. Anyway, so what's your address? <laughs> what's your address? <laughs> what's your address? <laughs> Wait, no, he's gonna win first. He's guys, he's gonna win first. I'm assuming everyone in round one should be done. Oh no, Agent X is still going. What is she doing? <laughs> There's a couple games still ongoing. Yeah. There's actually a whole lot of games still ongoing. Oh, Agent had a late start. A lot of people were looking for opponents and there were some disconnects. Gotcha. Alrighty. Here we go. Our next game is going to be on Pride of Altaris, and in the bottom right-hand corner of the map, we have the Protoss player who goes by the name of The Topster. The Topster. His opponent! A fellow Zerk player. A man I coached last night! He was very excited to be playing in this tournament. He mentioned he had to ask the wife if he could play games on the Saturday. Apparently they originally had plans, but apparently the schedule has been cleared. Video games can be played in Shren, one of the favorites for this tournament, at least in my heart. Alright, maybe as far as MMR goes, there's a couple players that are a bit higher up. But, uh, Shren, someone I've been coaching for a long time. Let's see how this one goes. And just like we saw earlier today as well, from Mr. Malin. It's gonna be a macro 12 pool, guys. So playing here with the Blue Zerg drones, we have Shren. Shren's a very good player when he doesn't get messed with. Generally speaking, and this I guess goes for most StarCraft players, but generally speaking, if the Protoss player is going to be playing passively or go for everything that's conventional, Shren is going to absolutely trash this guy. 100%. The problem is, though, that oftentimes, right, and this may be crazy, but oftentimes there's players, right, that are going to try and throw a wrench for your original plan. And that's, generally speaking, where the game becomes a little bit trickier. And, uh, yeah, where Shren starts struggling a bit. Now, Shren is a real grinder as well. He probably plays like 50 games a week. 
plays way more than I do. And uh, yeah, you can see it in the mechanics. Like he's gotten much better over the last couple of months. Or like the last half year or so. So good stuff. Yeah, they don't want you to win. No, this is the problem, man. Topster already. Handicapped himself a little bit by going for the pylon in the incorrect position. Protoss players in the in the game will probably already be cringing a little bit. Zealot is coming up. Yeah. There should be about 10 Zerklings in total. So more Zerklings are coming up. He is doing the split right over here. Okay. Ooh. Probably could have gotten in here. But it's okay. Once again, this is just one of those uh, one of those build orders that I mostly teach people because of the fact that there's a lot of cheese going on. Now, eventually... Okay. This is very good. Since there was... Not that much here as a follow-up, and no second pylon. This may just be an accidental victory right here for Shrent. Again, this is not an all-in. At least it's not meant as one. But, obviously, if Protoss messes up, it can definitely obtain the victory straight away. There's the third pylon just about to finish. Maybe one more unit will eventually get uh, out of the gateway here. But this is already a lot of damage being done right here by the Zerg. Yeah, he wants to preserve some of the units probably as well, so... Stargate is a follow-up. Uh, obviously, this is also right underneath... Okay, right underneath the Overlord and the Zerklings. So Zerk is well aware of exactly what the follow-up from Protoss can be. So this is why I like this build, man. I think it's genuinely very good. This is one of those strategies that, like... At the pro level, we don't really see it all too often anymore. Because the top-of-the-line Protoss players are very calm and collected when it comes to their defense. But it, it gives the initiative to... Players that, generally speaking, like to play macro. So, in this case, it's like Protoss that's extremely build order dependent. Like, Protoss is extremely rigid in the way that they play the early game, especially. Like, there's only so many options you have. It's very easy to accidentally mess it up, and now... I mean, if Topster isn't careful... Okay, I was gonna say, he needs another pylon here. Usually, uh, usually at this point, you rely on the Nexus being done and stuff. This is, uh... Yeah, a tricky little start so far here for the Protoss, but... He's okay. <laughs> Stargate Void Ray? Fuck champ? I agree, man. Unheard of. Never seen before. Alright. Now, the main downside of this build is if Protoss holds it perfectly, you are pretty far behind. And obviously, you don't really have any upgrades like, for example, Link Speed until quite a bit later on into the game. A couple different variations you can take as a Zerg player, but I think the one the Shren is going for here is fine. Probably not the most optimal one. I think you can delay the gases for longer. But this is a little bit safer. Assuming he starts up the link speed here in a little bit. And so far, you can see, like, when he's not messed with, games go really smoothly. Okay. I was gonna say, maybe at some point here, it looked almost like a one base all-in here from Topster. But Topster has not started up the warp gate research just yet. Another mistake that you won't see at a high level. But it's gonna basically now make it impossible for him to go for any sort of follow-up pushes. Hits another supply block here. All right. Now, we saw this earlier today, too. In Super uh, or Uber Noob's game, right? He was extremely far ahead after the early game. And then the Dark Templar marched across the map. Shren so far. Already has the detection set up. Should be more than okay against this sort of thing. And he's probably just gonna follow up play a macro game. Cool. This is very nice, actually, for me to see as well, man. So I, I've, I've been coaching both Shren and Uber Noob for probably the better part of... I don't know, the better part of a year? And it's cool to see people, like, you know, start playing far more solid StarCraft 2. Because obviously it's a tricky game. It's very difficult. They've been climbing up, knocking on the door of Master League. Yeah, a little bit below that. But, uh, you know, we're getting there. We're getting there. Protoss going for uh, what they're usually most comfortable with. And in the current meta of StarCraft 2, guess what? Heart Nepper is going to be very excited about this. I think it's going to be double Stargate Void Ray, guys. Still um, no Warp Gates, by the way. Topster has decided to go for the plus one Flyer attacks here first. Which means that he really doesn't plan on doing much of anything going forward. Now, I also know, because I talked to uh, Shren about this literally yesterday, I also know that he doesn't really like playing against maxed out Sky Tools very much. I had to reassure him yesterday that on two bases, Protoss players likely won't be able to max out with Sky Tools units. So as long as he looks around the map and finds a potential third base, 
He shouldn't be all too concerned about Mech Stout's Kytos. So, I really like the scouts here that Tren is doing. He is adding on drones as well after more units. So, the droning here was maybe a little bit slower, but he was just concerned, I guess, for, like, other units to go across. Generally speaking, this is followed up with a Queen March or something along those lines. But we've all seen it before, right? Where at some point the Void Rays just kind of show up and uh, they deal a lot of damage. That being said, there's already nine Queens out. Queen number 10 currently producing in the third base. Creep Spread is connecting all of the different bases. There's a, sh uh, a Spire coming up too, okay. In theory, all of this is perfect here for the Zerg. It's just that I've seen this go wrong many times before in, well, my own games. Where accidentally it's still easy to lose. But I think if you knock down these rocks over here. Queen March towards the third base. Bada bing, bada boom. Reduce them back down to two bases. Probably the scariest thing you can do at this point as a Zerg player is just kind of allowing this third base to go up. Protoss is going to start running out of minerals and out of gas here on the main and the natural expansion soon enough. So in probably a couple of minutes from now. Topster is going to need those minerals. So just denying the third would be huge. And while the scouting New here was pretty much perfect detected. earlier... Okay, I was going to say... Good morning, we do need Logo to see this one. Chat. Let's have a good clean fight. What's going on, Thunder General? Thank you very much. Welcome back. Alright. So what does Shren do? He sees the third base right now. Oh! He's using the Loco Announcer pack. That's instant plus 200 MMR. I've heard. No guarantees, but that's what I've heard anyways. Still no warp gate research, by the way. We're nine minutes into it. Still no warp gates. Hydra then comes up. We have ten queens available. And Topster does get the third base up and running. Alright. He sees the amount of Void Race. Pretty sure uh, Shren is currently swearing to himself. He's like, Ah, Shada, Bistu Furuk, Gaina Foydre, I bit the nicht. My German's not that good, but I think that's about it. <laughs> He's also a big fan of playing Lurkers, though, so I... <laughs> how, how did I do, guys? I feel like I nailed it. Yeah, that was really good, right? Thank you, guys. Thank you. I've been working. It's good enough. That's not how we swear and complain in German, Loco. Oh. You don't say Schade? What about Scheiße? Scheiße, dein Void Race! Bist du uh, verrückt? Das ist doch nicht uh, normal. Yeah, I, I think that was pretty good, man. Alright, follow up right here from Protoss. We've got the biggest ship that they have. Look at the Zealot over here, pretending to be a Zealot anyways. Scouting the phallus-shaped capital ship on the production. Um, here go to Void Race. Make the beam thick. The queens don't care though. Good transfusions. Loco is German. <laughs> Danke bitte. Ambia bitte. Und schnell! Oh no, that's that's rude, right? No, you can't say that. I haven't been to uh I haven't had beer in Germany in a long time, guys. I mean I guess I guess at Home Story Cup, right? At Stay at Home Story Cup, there were definitely a couple of beers involved. But not like, you know a German bar or something along those lines. Yeah. It's been a while. I've noticed with German beers in particular, it's very specific on the region that you go to. Like, for example, Cologne, which is right next to Krefeld, which is where Home Story Cup takes place, has an entirely different beer that you drink over there, okay? Like, even though they're literally like 20 minutes apart, Kölsch is the go-to beer in Cologne, and I think in... Krefeld, it's Bex. I think in a lot of parts of, of Germany, it's Bex. Anyways, essentially what I've learned is that, like, all of the different beer regions kind of just hate each other. <laughs> Am I correct in saying this? Like, all of the different regions kind of just, like, hate each other and all of the others suck other than the one that's in your local region? That's about it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, yeah, that makes sense. Kölsch isn't really beer. See, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, here we go. I think this is a little bit too passive here from our Zerg player, if I'm brutally honest with you, but he does have an awful lot of units here. He's been happily playing the macro game. He's going into Lurkers as a follow-up. Protoss has managed to secure a fourth base. 
Not the easiest unit comp here for the Zerg player to micro, but since there's no Storm available, no Disruptors, no anything like that, Corrosive Biles! Oh. This should be something he can actually deal with. He's going for a Corruptor follow-up right now as well. Obviously, that does require most of those Void Rays to be taken care of. Okay, I think the Queens right now are desperately trying to keep as much of this uh, taken care of as well. Yeah, queens are dealing a lot of damage. Hydras are picking off a couple of units at a time as well. A lot of Protoss units have been reduced to red hit points. But they're not dead. Yeah, good control right there by Topster, keeping a lot of those heavy hitters alive. Although right now, okay, he may be overextending a little bit. Yeah, he's really desperately trying to clean all of this up. Roaches and Ravagers since then have bypassed the rest of this army. Trying to do whatever damage they can. The Mama ship is showing up right here too. Okay, another carrier goes down. Prismatic alignment obviously still on cooldown. Mama ship, you have to fly on over there. Go cloak your friends. Alright, well, actually, there's a couple of Overseers still available. Shren spending the rest of his money on more Void Ray- or, sorry, more units that can counter Void Rays. And I think, despite the very dangerous decision-making here from our German Zerg player, he's given our Protoss a lot of time after being incredibly far ahead at the three-minute mark. I think he, uh... Yeah, he played a good game as a follow-up, right? That was very well done. Get your minus 400, <laughs> minus 400 ready. That that mama ship did plenty of damage, okay? I feel like this game was much closer than it needed to be. But it's not like there were any real, like, quote-unquote, like, mistakes being made. It just, like, as a Zerg player, kind of, like, scares me to give Protoss this much wiggle room, you know? But then again... I know that Tren also can get a little bit nervous in these kind of scenarios, and I guess going down against, like, I don't know, a bunch of Dark Templar or, like, a Warp Prism warping in the main base or something would be the worst way to go. And there it is. Decided to take the super safe approach, the double condom Zerk built. That's not very... Don't do that. Don't... Anyways, he does obtain the victory here eventually. GG's. All right, so we have a quick little look at the group situation as it is. Is there, like, a, an overview screen by any chance where we can actually see what the current standings are. Ah, there we go. Okay, so Iba going 3-0 so far. Dracula also going 3-0 in Group A. Group B, 4-0 right here by Jesu. J Jesu? Yorono currently 2-2, two two, the winner of the previous viewer event. Not having as good a time so far. Wait, Dracula did... Th oh, wait, he did went 3-1, sorry. Apparently, he already played the fourth game, whereas Eva didn't yet. My bad. Johnny Fox. Trend 2-2. Two and two. Uber Noob 2-2. Two and two. Mr. Bones 2-2. Two and two. Johnny Fox 4-0. and oh. Javaloon? I feel like Javaloon sounds like a whiskey brand. Javaloon 12. Right? It sounds like something... Anyways. <laughs> Javaloon 12 currently first plays in Group D. No, his name is Johnny Fox, not Johnny f It's it's a it's a fox, like the animal. Alrighty guys. Our next game, Curious Minds. The first time we're actually seeing this map today, so that's pretty exciting. In the bottom right hand corner, with the orange Protoss probes, we have the man who won the very first viewer tournament. We are looking at Yorono's main base. Yorono in that tournament ended up playing a lot of nice macro builds, and they didn't really end up working nearly as well. It's just him going for the full-on dirty cheese. He did a lot of cheesing that particular event. Worked out like a charm. So we'll see what he decides to go for in this match. So far in the tournament overall, he's not doing nearly as well. I think we just saw he was 2-2. Two two. So two wins, two losses. Gonna need to step it up if he wants to move on in this event. The opponent in the opposite corner. Going for that classic Terran uh, Command Center skin. We have none other than Lifur, who's in Clan Cutie Club. Hasn't the Cutie Club moved on over to Age of Empires entirely? I guess not. Anyways, I see some people joining right now. Loco, I missed the beginning of the stream. What exactly is this tournament? This is just a friendly event with people from the live stream and from the YouTube channel participating in a battle royale. Okay, 64 players enter, only one leaves. It's crazy, dude. Think of them as gladiators in one big ring, except they're fighting each other one-on-one -on -one first. That's about it. And one gladiator has 5,600 MMR. 
Someone signed up the other day and asked, Loco, I have to enter a four-digit MMR count, but I only have three digits worth of MMR. How do I fill this out? I didn't even know that that was possible. I didn't know you could have three digits of MMR. I don't know if that was a troll, though. I think it may have been a troll. Because I don't think it's actually possible. But maybe. 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 What do we have? <laughs> Your Ono! What are you doing right now, bro? You know what, guys? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Stargate, going New up in the center of Curious Minds. Hey, I messed your... a bit up in the last game. You messed up a bit in the last game? That's no, uh, no problem, Topster. GG's, thank you for participating. I was gonna say, if Mr. Lifer here is paying attention, he should probably know that something is not quite right. That probe came from somewhere. Ay, 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 ay. Oh my god. He's checking. He's checking. <laughs> okay, well, now the adept is gonna be here. Alright, so how well is our Terran player gonna be organized against this particular build? He didn't see a second pylon in the main base of the opponent. He didn't see much of anything on the other side of the map. So I guess he's being very cautious here. What? Yorono! Bro! Why Why does everyone hate the, the Roombas, man? Is this the death to the Roombas? It's like, tournament? Everyone's just killing them. Now look, I know they can like block structures and stuff, but that was your opponent's base. Yeah, he should be disqualified. Just straight up. I agree. Killing critters on the map, instant disqualification. Get him out of here. Anyways, two adepts right there for two, yeah, drones, not, or SCVs rather, not quite ideal. You're on now, you dirty f cheeser. Adding out a couple of shield batteries to the back of the Terran's main base. This is a build that's strong at the pro level. Not commonly played anymore because the pro players are good at defending it. But it requires one of those, you know, specific answers. The one thing you already kind of need is a second base. You can see losing the supply depot turns out to be a bit of a disaster. No production there for a little bit. Okay, apparently the probe was stuck, so Yorono had to cancel one of his own units. Yeah, so Viking Cyclone is very good against this, with some maybe some Marines for support. I wouldn't mind seeing another depot or two starting up here relatively soon, but... Okay, oh my god, that's sloppy. Yep, not what you want at all. Nicely done right there by Lifer. On the other side of the map, there is in the meantime one Reaper to rule them all. The one Reaper to bind them and in the darkness find them. Yeah, you really don't want to lose any units against this sort of thing. Like, if you have shield batteries, you shouldn't be losing Void Race. With the spawn locations here as well, the supply depots and, and like the positioning right here of, for example, these add ons. Yeah, they are favoring the Protoss player. This is one of the few imbalances we have in StarCraft 2. If Lifer would have spawned on the other side of the map, imagine the push happening over here. This, uh, the the add-ons would have spawned to the right of the main structures, whereas right in here they're a little bit more exposed, which does come into the into the mix with these sorts of openers. I never understood why you can't choose where the add-ons are, but anyways, shield batteries have finished up right now in the natural expo as well of the Terran player. Terran lost because of RNG. No, that's not what I'm saying, but I do not I do not think it helps. It, it doesn't, it, yeah, it definitely doesn't help. The technology just isn't there yet, okay. Terran players clearly not as good as, as Protosses are. That being said, I mean, sure, we have a million and one shield batteries, but we've also seen too many Void Rays go down. We've only seen one go down, but that's too many, okay? You can go for a Tempest follow-up, but usually you do that a little bit sooner. Okay. That's what you want. Has the Protals here. Oh my god! Could have sworn that one of them would have gone down, but... Whew. Uh, there was no MMR limit to this particular tournament. No. So I was a little bit concerned that we're gonna see, like, I don't know, one of the pro players show up for giggles. That would have been kind of fun. But, um, not quite the case. Oh, well, there it is. Fleet Beacon here on the back of this opener. So the idea behind the Fleet Beacon is that you start making Tempest. 
And Tempest obviously have a lot of range. Ooh. Oh, oh, I could have gone for a force field for sure. The only problem, obviously, is that Tempests also take about seven years to produce, and they're very expensive. So I feel like this transition here from Urano is a little bit late, New but it is putting Lifer right detected. now on a timer, because he needs to kill this. Oh no, the classic early Protoss aggression, woozy face. I know what you mean, Klingon Vetsa. Thank you very much for your 53 months. Okay. Terra really should try and break through this before it's too late. But obviously, uh, he doesn't know what the follow-up is going to be. There's finally the upgrade as well for the Tempest. Or, sorry, for the Cyclones. And there's Tempest number one being Chrono boosted out. No, it's two pylons over here powering everything. I thought for a second as well that most of it was powered by just one. So it's not really something he can easily target. So at some point, right, you reach critical mass with the Tempest. And Tempest can kill all of these units in one shot. If you can have a folly of uh, Tempest fire at a Viking, and obviously they have way more air-to-air -air range than Vikings do. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. That's not good. There it is. Terran players in the chat right now, molding. Not having a good time at all. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry you have to watch this pain. Because while there is technically a chance for Terran to win, I... I'm starting to feel the same thing you're feeling right now, okay? I can feel the hurt, the betrayal. This is one of those things where... You probably needed to kill it before it laid eggs. And now it's laid eggs in your natural expansion. You know what? He's making the best of it, though. Urano also being very generous here, giving his uh, his opponent a couple of units away, so that's nice. Yeah, you don't really need to do much of it. What? He killed one of his own stalkers. Um, I think at this point you don't have to control your other units anymore. You just have to control the Tempest. Just make sure the Tempests are always firing. They can kill units very easily. Alright, well, he decides to go in for the killer move right now, and despite the fact that I think the follow-up was a little bit sloppy. There's another sentry here as well to keep those units locked inside of the main base. As long as the Tempests don't fall, despite the fact that all the Void Rays pretty much have gone down right now, with the exception of one, which really shouldn't have happened, but... As long as the Tempests don't fall, they can kind of just kill everything from a distance. If Yorono wins, he has lost our respect. No, 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 this is fair game. It's dirty, but it's fair. A win is a win, okay? Everyone's a loser in war. Unless your name is Yorono and you've made shield batteries on the other side of the map. Um, Terran's gonna run out of money here. Yeah. So, 10 minutes into the game. Two bases worth of mules, or two command centers worth of mules dropping down here for a while. Because of that, he is sneaking out the orbital command. Eh, you know what? I don't mind the idea whatsoever. This is obviously not something that Yorono has seen, but it's something he should probably be sniffing out at this point. Whenever it's the 10 minute mark, you should always think about the fact that the opponent is likely trying to expand. Because 10 minutes into the game, the main base is going to run low, and usually if the natural is taken, the natural will start running low as well. So this is a no-brainer, and this could actually work out. Look at the minerals right now. Obviously the same is happening on the other side of the map, but since there's no mules, it's not to the same extent. The only problem is that there is still no answer right here to the Tempest. And what is the answer? Uh, 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 I don't know. No, you can try and overwhelm them, obviously. You're kind of relying right now on a mistake, though, from the Protoss player. Yorono has been making a bunch of those. He's been very busy microing the probe to be putting those uh, salt shaker bottle things right there inside of the natural. Yeah, the answer is not losing things. Exactly. Dude, this is... Oh god. I've got, a, I've got a feeling he's gonna still pull the boys here soon enough. Anyways, he's trying to make the best of it. He's got a lot of units. He's got Stimpak done right now as well. Yorono has no clue. Okay, okay, finally. Finally, he's been thinking about that second uh, command center that he saw a little while ago. He's like, why isn't this guy leaving? 
Okay, I think you should send those units over there, except the, the sentry. Kill them all dead. Yeah, so at this point, we're at critical mass. As long as the Tempest are firing, they can one-shot Vikings, they can one-shot Cyclones, they can one-shot all the units. So essentially what you want to do is you want to keep them going. Yorano hasn't stared at the minimap in the better part of three minutes though, so he still hasn't seen that, you know, massive green rectangle. <laughs> a square is a, it's a, is a square a rectangle? Yeah, I guess so. Not all rectangles are square. Uh, whatever, whatever. Pew! A little bit disconnected on the shots. But in the end, it doesn't even matter. Shall we look at this screen? My face went. Uh, sorry, Terran players. The oofs and the ouches in Twitch chat are the Terran players. The lols, the lols, are, are the Frodo's players. Hey, look! He looked at the minimap. Yorono did it. He found it. Yeah, life worth sticking in this though. It's just that he's kind of super dead, right? He's hoping for the one magical stim. Yeah, that ain't it. GG. And that's why I'm a Zerk, says Soran. You think Zerks can't be cheesed? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know about that. Now, Lifer was this close to scouting it in the early game because he realized that something wasn't quite right. And sadly for him, he didn't pick up on it. Just barely soon enough. Alrighty, guys. Here we go. This is an interesting one. So, spawning in the bottom right hand corner of Curious Minds, the smallest map for a Zerk versus Zerk, we have Mr. Shren, one of the people that I coach in StarCraft 2. And his opponent in the opposite corner, another person that I currently coach in StarCraft 2. I only coach two people right now, and like they're. Oh god, alright. With the red Zerk pieces, we have Uber Noob. Um, Uber Noob was complaining about. Three hours ago, that it was five in the morning for him, and that I shouldn't judge his game all too harshly. I guess now it's eight in the morning, <laughs> and he hasn't slept. For Shren, it's currently five in the afternoon, which is probably pretty good, right? That's a, a relatively... Uh, he decided to get some coffee, by the way, said, said Uber Noob, so I guess it's not too bad. It was five in the morning for you too, Fluffy Waffle, no slackers. Fair enough. All right, so Shren mentioned that he doesn't like getting cheesed all too much in Zerk vs. Zerk. So we've been going over this very safe approach to ZVZ, or at least like safe, or safe ish opener, where you go pull into a hatch, into a gas, and you default into making six Zerklings. It's one of those, like, I don't want to die to stupid stuff type of builds. The thing is, right, I've been. Like, I've been teaching them very similar playstyles, so I'm not exactly sure what to expect from this one. But I don't think it's going to be anything. I, I, I don't know. Maybe we're going to find out that something is going to be crazy, but... Obviously, playing games as you, you, as you do normally is very different uh, compared to playing them when, uh, you know, you're going up against someone while your game is being casted and stuff. So, I don't know. Maybe they're going to... Like, what I'm trying to say, like, I've played tournaments myself as well, and I would practice these macro builds for a long time. I'd be like, okay, I'm ready, dude. Let's go and play the macro game. And then as soon as I sat down to play the tournament match... I would forget all about it and put down my Roach Horn and instantly start cheesing my opponent. I, I don't know why, but I know that that is something that can happen. Anyways. Six Zerklings going straight across the map. Sounds familiar, says Yorono. <laughs> Let's see how much damage they can do. So I don't know if... Um, ooh, nice micro right there by Shren. I don't know if Uber Noob is familiar with this one. Yeah. He's making the assumption at this point that this is a 12 pool. It's not. Just has to play carefully here. But this is exactly what Shren is hoping for. Doesn't get a whole lot of damage done here. Good control here by Uber Noob, all things considered. He probably didn't need to pull the drones at all. Probably didn't need the spine crawler either, but... Did he just lose an Overlord? Okay, that's actually the worst part about all this. Losing the OV there is... Yeah, not ideal. So this right now puts the red Zerg player in... Yeah, a blind spot. So overly Overlord right here on the left side. I'm expecting this OV to head on over in this direction. Exactly. Alright. 
Loco, just to point out even more drama, who loses this match is out of the tournament. Oh, I haven't looked at the current standings yet, but you could very well be true, or you could very well be right. I haven't really looked at the standings because the games have been going one after another. Oh, this is the round seven match? Okay, I see. More drama. So what both of these guys like to do, and I don't know if they know that of each other, uh, what both of these guys like to do is drone up two bases and then take the third. Trend going for the blind banelings as well, which is something he pretty much always does. Just because there's a lot of link cheeses going on. But, uh... There's no link cheese in this game, I don't think. Shren actually, or Uber Noob rather, hitting a, a four Overlord supply block. New subscriber detected. Yay, viewer Tony. What's going on, Barnacle Bot? Thank you very much. Welcome back. You can blame me. Yeah, yeah, I'll take the blame. That's totally fine, man. I'm not necessarily a Zerk versus Zerk expert either, but. The problem with ZVZ, right, that most people run into is that, like, yeah, you can know all of the theory, and that's nice and all, but sometimes you just accidentally get a bailing to the face, or you don't pay attention for about a split second and everything gets surrounded, or suddenly there's Mutalisk, or, like, there's, like, in StarCraft 2 in general, there's, like, a million ways in which you can accidentally lose, but it's, like, it's like it's doubled in Zerk versus Zerk because of unit speed and the amount of health that units have, right? Like, everything just sort of dies in one hit, and... Dying to stupid stuff is exaggerated in ZVZ. It's very easy to accidentally lose. Even if you know all the theory, it might not work out perfectly. Uh, we should see a Roach Speed here as well for uh, Shren. Yep, there it is. So, plus one, plus one here from Shren. That's the real advantage for him. Whereas, there's only a single upgrade right now for Uber Noob. Renoop actually not going for the link speed at all. Nice scout right here as well for Shren. Alright. Yeah. So this is not really what I've learned at least. This is not really what the conventional ZVZ is in Diamond League. Apparently it's a little bit more aggressive than what we have right over here. Shren decides to make a move out on the map right now. His Overlord, or sorry, his Roach Speed is a little bit delayed, so he does need to be careful. He doesn't get caught off guard against his opponent's Overlords, or <laughs> Roach Speed. I've also been casting for a couple hours, okay? More coffee? No, no, I don't think we can do more coffee. Well, Overlord Speed is not a bad idea. There you go. Thank you for helping me out, friend. Yeah, so he decides to go back home. I don't mind the idea. Couple of slow links right over here. Always more coffee? No, not always, man. It's now 5 p.m. I think 5 p.m. is a little too late for more caffeine. Now, as Shren showed against the Protoss on Pride of Altaris a little while ago, he is very happy going into those lurkers, and he's not afraid to play the macro game. So already we have the Infestation Pit, we have the Hydro Dent going up. What? <laughs> wait, 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 what happened? Never mind. Ooh. The mind games right here. Did something happen? Did I miss something? I thought something fun happened, chat. Sorry I missed it, assuming I did something dumb. Money immediately starts piling up for the both of them as they queue up 11 drones. Psychological warfare, yeah. All right. I'm trying to think, like who do I favor in a longer game? I know that Trent is very comfortable playing that Hydra Lurker style. I think... Uber Noob will probably go for a move out though. I uh, I know he's fond of going for like attacks right when upgrades finish, but this is a bit of an awkward one. We just had one one done, or plus one rudder done. I guess he decides, you know what? I've got a lot of stuff. Let's test the waters and see what I what I can do. And at this point, he would be correct. He does have a lot of units. Twelve more roaches coming up though for Shren. Local up became his favorite child. <laughs> I think both of these guys are like 10 years older than me, man. I don't <laughs> I don't know how that works. Zerk players are boomers is what I'm saying. Except for Eba, apparently. Is Milo my favorite child? People always say they don't have a favorite child, but I feel like that is that is not true, man. Yo, for people here in the chat that have multiple kids. Are you saying you really don't have a favorite? 
Mm, I don't know, man. You have a favorite child? <laughs> of course you do, Loco. My dad outright says he, he likes my sister more. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, that's that's rough. Ooh, Uber Noob splitting up the army. Trying to see if he can catch his opponent off guard, and it looks like he managed to do so. That being said, the army up north did split itself off from the peck quite a bit. Overlord's over here scouting everything out as well. Trent needs to split off the units once again. Yeah, a little bit of double-pronged harassment right here. Lurker tech is already available, though, for Shren. So as soon as he gets lurkers out, yeah. Roach pushes will be basically gone for, or done for. Fourth base, a little bit quicker right here for Uber Noob, who's going to stick around indeed on Roach Ravager for a while longer. Goes into the Hydro Den of his own. All right. Let's see. There's the Infestation Pit, there's the Hydro Den. Okay, Lurkers right now are spotted as well. But that doesn't mean that you can't deal damage anymore with Roaches and Ravagers. Because obviously Lurkers, without their uh, Hive Tech upgrades, they're going to have a hard time being in multiple locations at once. So even though I like the game a little bit, a little bit better for Shren earlier, Uber Noob has been putting on a lot of pressure here, which is really nice for him. Tekken up as well, going up to the fourth base. He doesn't quite have the tech advantage just yet. Oh god, he decides to go in. Oh my god, that might be a little bit much though. Those lurkers are getting so much damage and he just walked into the concave as well. Ooh. There's one lurker over at the third base too, trying to get some work done. I think that the idea was to like bow down the lurkers and then try to get on out of there, but that's exactly what Shren wanted it to do as well. A ballsy move right there for Uber Noob. Looks like it didn't quite pay off. He's also following us up with eight drones right now, plus two armor. I think it's time to make some units. Hive upgrades are done right now for the Lurkers as well for Shren. Plus three is just about to finish. He does have a lot of minerals in the bank because he never took a fourth base and the gases at the third aren't actually saturated. But right now he can start splitting up the units and start taking care of the opponent's stuff. So he doesn't really need to be... Yeah, he doesn't really need to have everything in one big ball anymore. Half his army is enough to deal with his opponent's army, so I wouldn't even mind seeing it into split into three different sections. But obviously that requires a lot more actions per minute. Okay, instead he decides to make a beeline right now towards the additional bases of the opponent. Mass Hydra over here. Yeah, Mass Hydra isn't going to do so well against just a bunch of roaches. Lurkers at the same time, though, have made their way towards the natural expansion. Trent decides to play... The safest approach he can come up with and send at least a chunk of that army home initially. <laughs> Decides better of it and goes back home once again. Okay, and there's one lurker over here. On that high ground too. GG, thanks for Loco for hosting the tournament. This was awesome. There it is. Mr. Shren obtains the victory. Even though I got a little bit dicey there for a little bit. That was a good match. That was nice. Yeah, Ubernoot was in a really good spot there. But then he decided to jump on that army. And jumping on lurkers... I mean, the way you do it is, is pretty much like that, right? Like, you tried to jump straight on it, uh, but there was a little bit uh, a little bit too much right there. Yeah, Lurkers are scary. They deal so much damage against Roaches. It's the free fall. It really is. Alrighty, next up, we are on Glittering Ashes. Top right hand corner, Master League Terran player. His name is Sir Giorgi. There's a lot of H's in that, George. Is that just a creative spelling of the name George, or am I supposed to pronounce it differently? Hmm, I don't know. The opponent in the opposite corner, playing with the yellow Protoss probes, we have a Velvet. That's beautiful. That's really, that's really beautiful. Glittering asses? No, it's glittering ashes, guys. Velvet, I was just talking about how beautiful your name is. What's this? <sighs> Could just be a good old Max Packs opener. The Max Packs opener is one of those builds that theoretically doesn't really make a lot of... Ooh, <laughs> that was... Okay. George probably should have picked up on the fact that that probe went from a different angle. Anyways, theoretically it probably shouldn't work out. 
because it's so strange because you literally go pylon into pylon into gateway which is a bit weird but realistically since a lot of terrans are very keen to go for a command center on the low ground the max specs opener is pretty strong so george could have picked up on the fact that that probe came from the left side of the map but obviously we know that and he hasn't picked up on that i don't think The nice thing about this start is that you can follow it up with loads of different variations, right? You can go into a Stalker, you can even go into like a Stargate, you can do loads of things. Okay. Huh. So George hasn't seen anything. I guess he went to the other side of the map. Yeah, has seen the lack of expansion from his opponent. Ugh, loses an SCV there. So I think he wants to go in base command center instead. Velvet right now, following this up with even more dirtiness. Uh, it's gonna be a factory, okay. So, it is a, a marine right now and a very quick concussive shells upgrade, guys. I'm just saying, those two things don't really mix very well. Okay, councils the bunker over there. Velvet so far going for a bit of a cleaner start. Indeed, now following it up with that Stargate I was talking about as well. And we have seen this before, huh? Look, Yorono, if you just play this build, you don't even need warp gates. I mean, you can still make warp gates, but this is dirty. It is a little bit dirty. I feel like there's a lot of very dirty builds going on right now, guys. I'm just saying. Okay, I, I don't know. A lot of very dirty strategies being played. And they're all very effective. <laughs> it's the cheese colored protals. I should have picked up on that. Velvet indeed is playing with the yellow colors. Oh. Loco's viewers are dirty. Wow, bro. You're viewing me right now, Solidmore. Is this a self roast? Those are rare. Anyways, there it is. The mightiest of spaceships. Bzzz. Make the beam thick. Lasers! Laser! That's what I think Protoss players think whenever they make one of these. Is this true, Protoss players? Do you guys just shout lasers? In real life, over and over and over again? Because it's good. That's not what you do? Yeah, this is the Giga Chat of the Protoss army. And I think that's beautiful. Look at the Roomba over here. Hey, he's got a number on his back. This is number 86. Uh, so the units you want against this is Cyclones and I guess Cyclones, if you're Sir George here. The problem is he just lost the Supply Depot at the front. He doesn't have a second Command Center. And his main goal, I guess, is proxying uh, a Liberator or something. The transition here is also extremely quickly into those Tempests. And believe it or not, Siege Tanks have a hard time against Tempest. Yeah, I know. This may come as a bit of a surprise, but... Still Supply Block, by the way, here for Terran. <laughs> it kind of hurts my feelings, guys. Velvet with a very clean game. Easy moding his way through this match so far. Eventually a supply depot did drop from the high heavens here for our Terran player. That's nice. Nobody knows where they come from or I guess it's the orbital command that just has contact with a bunch of debris floating around the planet that this game is being played on. And somehow some way it procured a supply depot of its own. It's one of the things that science has a hard time explaining. Two Marauders over here, brave, laugh in the face of danger. But they also are not capable of lying on their backs and shooting, you know, their concussive shells into the skies. And while eventually we do now see a couple of Cyclones popping up, the upgrade never finished. The Tech Labs have been destroyed. And we're soon going to get to the point where critical mass has been reached on those, that, or on those Tempests as well, where they can essentially just one-shot every single one of those... Uh, yeah, those Terran units. There is still the one starboard on the other side of the map, yeah. But even that one didn't really do anything. 
killed a couple of probes. A last valiant effort right there from Sir George. But I think at this point it's pretty much GG. There it is. Velvet playing a very cheesy but also very clean game overall. Well done, GG. Alrighty guys, here we go. Our second semi-finals. Iba is already waiting in the grand finals of the Loco Viewer Tournament number two. Who's gonna be his opponent? So here's the situation, since obviously we did the group stages depending on MMR. There are some wildly different skilled players in the tournament still left over. So spotting here in the bottom left hand corner, we have none other than Rebo Sul, who is a Gold League Protoss player. His opponent, a Master League Terran, off racing with Protoss, but we already secretly know that he's pretty good with Protoss as well, so <laughs> we'll see how this goes. We are looking at Jesu, Heisu, I don't know. I'm gonna just pronounce the J, okay? I don't, I don't know how to pronounce words. Anyways. We'll see how this one goes. Rebusu already very excited. He made it all the way. <laughs> I don't think that's it. <laughs> the S is silent. I don't think so, uh, Ballistical. I'm not. <laughs> I don't think that's it, man. But maybe you're right. You could be. Any anyways, we have a Protoss versus Protoss right here. Best of three series. I guess, uh... Jesu over here is trying his very best to hide a probe on the left side of the map. Why was that so funny? Probably because I've been casting games for six hours. I've been sitting here slowly running out of caffeine because it's already 8 p.m. as well and I really don't want to drink more coffee because that's just going to be a recipe for disaster. Well, it's probably fine for, for you guys, but it's a problem for me tomorrow. I probably won't sleep too much. They're like, Loco, well, there's a problem. I don't really see the issue here. Anyways, uh, we already did cast or look at a couple of games of Rebus earlier. And let's just say he's very fond of going for the good old Forgate. Wouldn't be surprised if he decides to mix that in once again. Jesu, though. Going for cheek little Stargate. Loco, it's 5 a.m. in Australia. Look, it's 8 p.m. over here in the Netherlands, okay? It is getting a little bit late over here too. Although I did wake up pretty late, all things considered. Like like I said, I originally woke up at two in the morning and I thought, oh my God, am I really gonna be casting this tournament off of like two hours of sleep? That seems like a problem. Uh, and then suddenly it was like nine. I was like, oh, that's better. So I didn't actually start doing anything today until like 10, but that's still 10 hours ago. It's been a little while. It's also the end of the week. Ooh, two adepts awkwardly wander into each other. Uh, it's not good right here for our player in orange. Yeah. Hey, shout out by the way. For everyone already uh, hanging out here the entire stream long. Also shout out to everyone who participated in this tournament. I'm really enjoying these. I hope you guys are as well. We'll make some adjustments again for the next one too. And fine tune it a little bit better. Or maybe change the rules entirely. I don't know. Anyways, I'm really enjoying these. It's a lot of fun to uh, yeah, see you guys face off against each other. Hoping to do more of them. Anyways. Oh my god. Jesu even getting a little bit cheeky over here. Saving up two oracles. Hmm. Now, two stalkers are eventually going to get rid of those oracles. The only problem is that there's a good chance Protoss here in orange is going to move them. And honestly, yeah, see, um, honestly, I don't think the oracles really care. Oh my god. Close your eyes if you're a Protoss player. Actually, also open them again because I guess you're a Protoss player watching a Protoss player close other Protoss players' units down. I, yeah. Yeah, seven probes. Not even, not even perfect, but getting a good amount of damage done. And you can kind of see the damage starting to pile up right now. Natural Expo here required eventually, and apparently we are going to be going into additional gateways as well as a Twilight Council. And this is the problem, right? If you make little mistakes here and there, players that are 
making the exact same units can exploit them in, yeah, just slightly better ways. And eventually it's like a domino effect in StarCraft 2. One mistake leads to a second mistake and better players usually can build on advantages that they've, uh, that they've got quite a bit better. By attacking! We cast it, or we had a look at quite a few games today uh, where players just simply seem to refuse to attack. But look, guys. Attacking! Look! Are you seeing this? Look! Amazing. Crazy stuff. Nice control here, actually, by uh, Jason. So I think if I saw correctly, uh, when I had a look at his profile, I think his Protoss was like 4k MMR. This honestly seems very clean. If this was rank roulette, I would have definitely guessed him a little bit higher than this. Not really making any obvious mistakes. I'm still a little sore from the one hour long Terran versus Terran. Yeah. It bothers me when people go into games of StarCraft 2 with absolutely no win condition in mind. And then just kind of sit there for an hour. Yes, that bothers me, guys. I know. Having... <laughs> All right, never mind. We're back down to 4k MMR. I don't know what that res. Oh, we're misclicking. Oh, okay. You wanted to put a stasis ward down. Yeah, you gotta think in games like in competition. You gotta think of win comp uh, win conditions, right? And just kind of sitting there doing nothing, turtling up on two bases. That's not a win condition. Anyways, why win? I like to pew pew. Fair enough. Fair enough. The win condition is to have fun. Are you suggesting f having fun in a video game? That's blasphemous, uh, Ustas. I'm not here to have fun. I'm here to smash the competition. Gobble up their ladder points. Obtain the victory. <laughs> Sweaty nerds only over here. Anyway, nice stasis work right over there. No, I get what you mean. It is a legitimate play style, of course. Ooh, battery overcharge over here. Blink at this point is done. Stalkers are soon going to wake up once again as well. They've got a fever dream right here. They're like, what? What's going on? Ah, yeah. Do you think they can still experience things while they're in that stasis? Hmm... Yeah, Jesu actually never made a whole lot of probes. So he's got a bunch of workers right now for the bases that he's got, but like... I guess he hasn't spent the resources quickly enough. I wasn't, really, I wasn't paying very close attention to exactly right there, but he should probably have a slightly bigger army here than he's got right here. Anyways, still has got more than enough stuff right here to deal with his opponents. Third base does come up. Yeah, he's way ahead here. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think a, a StarCraft 2 unit in a stasis feels? Do you think time is just a full skip for them? Do you think they can still feel everything? Whoa, bro! What about units that are not finished warping in yet? Do they feel any pain? <laughs> Let's address the more critical issues. What about unbeatable plates? Do they feel anything? Battery overcharge, no longer available here. Well, I think actually it might be... Yeah, he doesn't have energy here. Uh, he could go for the battery overcharge. Anyways, the Immortal got target fired down. And while Rebosu will eventually end up losing this game. He's managed to hold on for nine minutes. And considering the disaster start that this game began with, right? With the double adepts and then the oracles going unscouted and stuff. He still made a very solid game out of it. Especially considering he is... Two entire leagues behind his opponent. Yeah, the supply difference at this point in the game no longer lies, though. Becomes pretty obvious, and GG is cold. But we are doing best of threes now, so... He's definitely got a chance. Albeit a small one. Alrighty, guys. Game number two. On Curious Minds, and this time around... Our Protoss player has magically become a Zerk? What? Huh? Is that even legal? Anyways, still playing his off race. 
Obviously, this is gonna be a little bit different. Rebel Soul, please put the first pylon in the right spot this time. Mm, is that the right spot? Because I just casted a game featuring Rebel Soul, and let's, let's just say on this. Let's just say on this map, he, um, he made a very gimmicky wall. I think this one might just barely be okay or barely not be okay. I don't think it's okay. Nope, it's not okay. Nope. It's too close. It needed to be over there. Yep, yep. Oh, God. Well, this one is slightly better than the previous one, but there's a hole over here. There's obviously a hole over there, too. And normally... <sighs> I don't know how to wall on this map for Keg W. <laughs> we noticed. We noticed. Yeah, we could tell. Anyways, I've now seen quite a few Rebel Souls games, and he hasn't gone Stargate a single time. He knows that I'm talking about it. Yeah, I'm sure he's not listening to the stream, but he knows I, I gotta be bringing it up by now. Especially after, after the previous game that we already saw. Let's pull out the ruler. Whenever I see a pylon that's likely gonna be part of the wall, as a Zerg player at the very least, I'm immediately thinking about a Baneling Bust. If I see a pylon over here, oh dude, I immediately think, okay, if you've messed up your wall off, I wanna like... So we're going Cybercore in the main base. He's also very fond of going double gateway every time though. I don't think this is actually a very good start against Zerg. So the norm is to go 20 supply Nexus, 20 supply Cybercore against the hatch first. So now we've got double gateway. Excuse me, double gateway. We're going for another pylon here because the wall off is completely. Uh... <sighs> oh, this is an abomination of a wall. Oh sure, we can plug that with a shield battery. Anyways. Yeah, it's off with his head. <laughs> yeah, it does hurt me a little bit. Jay Sudo, just playing a good old standard game. Heading on over towards the third base as well. He's looking at this right now as well with the Overlord. He's like, what's going on, man? If you don't see a Nexus though on the low ground, it is a little bit dangerous to go for your own third base. General rule of thumb with Zerk is to go one base up on your opponent. Always good to remember the basics. And it's very easy to uh, get a little carried away. Ooh. Is it pizza time, guys? I think it's pizza time. Oof. It is currently 8 p.m. over here. We still have the grand finals to go, which is a best of five series. And I haven't really eaten a whole lot today. Cold pizza for you, Loco? No, 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 I think it just got here. Oof. I know the game is going on right now, guys. It's, it's, it looks pretty good, dude. Looks pretty good. You love pizza? I think everyone loves pizza, man. Are there people out there that don't like pizza? Is there someone in the chat right now that's like, ah, pizza, don't care for it. You prefer pasta? Fair enough. There's this local Italian place. It's quite nice. I was just about to give you guys the name, but that's probably a bad idea. Let me, let me dox myself by giving you guys the name. <laughs> Not a great idea. <clears throat> but um, they do like proper Italian pizzas. Which is nice. There's like a Pizza Hut and like a Domino's and New York and everything nearby as well. But in general, not as good. Not as good. No, I didn't say there's this loco Intel. Uh, no, no, no. I said local Italian place. Anyways. How much is a large pizza at that place? I don't think they do large. I think they just do pizzas. The guy that runs the place is actually Italian though. So, you know, that must mean it's good, right? I actually do enjoy making pizza, yeah. No, I've made pizza from scratch a bunch of times. It's really fun. It's just that you kind of need to have like a proper pizza oven as well to do it well. And while our oven does go pretty hot, I think it goes up to like 275 C, which is hot for like a home oven. They generally do pizzas in much hotter ovens and stuff, so it's kind of it's tricky to do it properly at home. 
but it is very uh it is very doable mm -hmm. yeah i know a pizza stone is a good idea but you gotta like pre-hit the oven for like uh, an hour an hour and a half or so right and at that point i've wasted about as much electricity that I could have also just gone and bought one because it's cheaper and faster. <laughs> like I could, I could let the oven preheat for for an hour, but not a. Maybe one day I will. I don't know. Yeah, you kind of need one of those like firewood ovens, but they need to like store that one. Uh -huh, I don't know. Anyways, what do we have going on in the game, guys? Double fort is a follow up. Now you can cannon rush twice as hard. Oh, army hotkey here for the zerk player. You can see all of the zerklings running back home. No, electricity, well, electricity prices has go, have gone up quite a bit, right? But we've got some solar panels up on the roof. Makes a big difference. I can run uh, loco TV. Electricity neutral. At least throughout the summer. No, we haven't had them for a full year yet, so I'm curious to learn how much we actually get. But Yeah, Rebels right now indeed is pointing out that there's a lot of Zerg units out. Curious Minds also has a very wide open third base. Well, you go for that one anyways. So Zerk can just go in for a big push if they want to. I don't know where the Queens are going, though. Hello. I guess they're on a rally point to eventually go across the map. They're going to set up the slowest sandwich of all time. Sixteen more roaches coming up. I think that Jesu actually is just going to try and go for a full-on... Full on approach. There's only a couple of drones over at the third base, so he will need to at least kill the opponent's third nexus in order to justify going for this push. Did I just publish a YouTube video while I'm still streaming on Twitch, Mugetsu? Not a professional, confirmed. Not a professional. Total noob. Anyways, here we go. The Zerk army. Trying to see if they can take care of the Protoss. Can we please have a battery overcharge? Yeah, there it is. Bit late, though. Battery immediately gets targeted down as well, and I've got a feeling with that. Rebels' chances in this tournament. The boys have been pulled. They want to lose... Uh, or they want to use their little tasers to try and zap down the Zerk army for at least a little bit, but... I think that might just be... A little bit too much here. I mean, it's hard to push up the ramp. It's hard to push up the ramp here for Zerk. Because you don't really know exactly if there's going to be any force fields or something along those lines. So the Rebels might be able to stick around in the game for a little while longer. Either that or he's just going to go for a full-on approach. Like, he doesn't have much eco. Even though Jesu does have, you know, a third base and a fourth base coming up. He doesn't really have drones for the third and the fourth. A couple of them, and obviously you can transfer drones over there. Full face tank on the ramp. I've had disruptors in my army one too many times, so I get a little anxious seeing that, but I think it's indeed a fair play right here from Jesu. Not entirely sure what the Protoss player still had left over. But I think we're just about to see our second finalist move on to the best of five series that's at the end of this tournament. And of course, the trophy will have to be decided here very soon. Is there anything better than this, man? Ay, ay, ay. A Lenny on a trophy, yeah. I'm sure these 19 probes are going to make all the difference. Get them, 19 probes. Sometimes I think Void Rays are better, but I guess that's why I'm Gold League and lose to Skytoss. GG. <laughs> uh, I think Void Rays are very good, but... Considering Jesu was like a good amount of MMR above him, he did a very good job. So well played. Oh, if one of the mods wants to start up a prediction, please go ahead and do so. That would be awesome. A Twitch chat prediction, that is. That would be nice. All right, guys, here we go. The grand finals 
of the second viewer tournament. Spawning right here in the bottom left-hand corner of Blackburn. A man nobody expected in the finals whatsoever because he was only like 800, 900 MMR above the second place guy. Incredible. We have none other than Iba. And his opponent in the bottom right playing with the Red Terran SCVs, which is actually his main race, just to clarify. Uh, we have none other than Jesu, the one we just saw in the semifinals as well. Iba, normally a Zerg player, has decided to pick up the Protoss pieces instead to make it maybe a little bit more fair. The problem is Iba is still a very highly ranked player. He's about 5.6k MMR. And just to once again emphasize, he's 12 years old. Like, it's crazy. He apparently managed to make it to Grandmaster League. I mentioned this earlier today, but he managed to make it into Grandmaster League when he was 11. Yeah, he holds the world record for youngest player in Grandmaster League ever. Which is kind of crazy. Anyways. If there's one takeaway from this whole event is uh, just know that there's a bunch of players out there that are very young and very good. Diba probably the one leading the charge in that department. There are a bunch of people that are like five, they're like 15, 16 years old or so. I was going to say 15. That's... Anyways. So I do feel like this is going to be an uphill battle right here for Jesu, but obviously Iba is off racing, so we'll see how this goes. We're also doing best of fives right now. And Iba is allowed to switch to his main race if he wants to, if he goes down 2-0. to zero. Mm -hmm. Oh god. <laughs> That's a mental victory and a half already. Yeah, I, I had a look at Iba's Liquipedia page at some point that literally says like his year of birth is 2009. I'm like, oh man, I remember buying Wings of Liberty in 2010. Early 2010 as well. I managed to, like, pre-order that game and like... 2009, yeah. Crazy, right? Anyhow. Stargate coming up. Apparently Raynor wasn't particularly happy about the fact that his, uh, his record got overtaken. <laughs> Now, it is a big step, though, going from, like, low-tier Grandmaster into, like, the actual pro-level scene. Like, the difference between someone in a low Grandmasters and someone at the pro-level is still a very substantial amount of MMR. But, um... I mean, it's a good starting point. Yeah, I've been following StarCraft 2 religiously ever since they announced Wings of Liberty, man. <laughs> it's been a little while. Yeah, it does feel a bit, a little bit like David going up against Goliath, but I mean, we know how that story ends. With Goliath smashing the competition. No, wait, no. Um, spoiler alert. Sorry, sorry. For those of you unfamiliar with, you know, David versus Goliath. Loco spoiling the Bible. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Didn't mean for that to happen. So stupid. <laughs> Look how I was reading that. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> First two deaths getting a little bit of damage done. But here we go. There's already a Robo Bay coming up for Eba. Still, by the way, the main gas has not been acquired here by Jesu. <laughs> I was reading that. That's so stupid. After six hours of streaming, those bad jokes make me giggle. Anyways. Um, we're gonna go into Colossus, it seems, or maybe Disruptors, together with good old Phoenixes. It is one of those unit compositions that's not easy to control. I think Phoenixes in general reward very active play. The only problem is that uh, usually the APM is lacking, but as we saw in one of the Zerg games from Iba earlier, he was averaging like 550 APM. Which uh, has a decent amount. Has a decent amount of actions per minute. He's even going into the plus one flyer attacks. Okay. I like it. Now, this is a scary Terran army, though. He's uh, late on the Colossus here because he hit a supply block. And these Terran units are actually not really counterable without a Colossus. 
Like, there's two Adepts. Two Adepts and like five Phoenixes. Colossus is still about only halfway done. And again, it's because of that supply block. This is the, uh, yeah, this is the moment. There you go. Jesu, get him. Jesu, maybe uh, more than like a thousand MMR down below his opponent, but uh, he can still hit a nice little timing attack. And even though everything was going well here for Eva, he hit a supply block. Even Jace Hu right here can barely believe it. He's like, wait, what, is it, what just happened? Like, how did I just get up that ramp? 21 probes have gone down. He needs another pylon really badly. There's still plenty of juice remaining on those ones, though. Okay, a little bit of energy. Okay. So, he does manage to stabilize, but Jace Hu now has twice the amount of workers. Plus, he's got mules, which is pretty good. Third command center is coming up. The Colossus is finally going to pop out. Hmm. What the f***, Kodra? I love it. Don't get me wrong, but... <laughs> Miracles do happen. Now all of a sudden we're playing StarCraft 2 hard mode. Now we're playing StarCraft 2 hard mode where it's all up to the Terran player. Jesus should probably go for a follow-up push. Try and hit a timing attack with a good amount of units. New subscriber detected. Colossi obviously can still help out. Shield battery overcharge has been a saving grace for Protoss players for quite some time right now as well. So timing attacks are tricky to pull off. Aniba is... Making three probes at once because of that third base. I don't even know if Jesu has seen it. No. Well, he saw the pylon over there, so he probably makes the assumption that it's up and running at this point. I'll text his own supply depot here just for good measure for a little bit. Yeah, I've got a feeling he's just got to go for one big attack. It's a bit dangerous, though. Second Colossus is out right now. This shouldn't be winnable anymore for Iba. Because of that early game damage and because of the, the level of play. But a mistake in StarCraft 2 can be made very easily. Oh my god. He decides to go Extender Thermal Lens, another Stargate, and a Fleet Beacon all at the same time. Detected. I think that that might be a bit much. And But I think, I mean, that's too much. I feel like maybe... Uh, like a Colossus a little bit quicker or even like a... What's it called? A disruptor would have not been a bad idea either. Alright. This is gonna be the move where Jesu is managing to, or is, is at the very least meaning to end the game. I think there are enough marauders here though. Yeah, without the extended thermal lens, it's gonna be very hard to get much done. Gonna try and shoot some lasers! Overextension right there on the Colossus. Battery overcharge is gonna be pretty good, but I don't think it's gonna be quite enough. Although I say that second Colossus, or I guess the third Colossus, just about to pop. Oh my god, what? <laughs> that last Colossus was about this much from finishing. GG. Alrighty, game number two on Curious Minds. Now obviously that was a very close defense right there for Eva. I think if he wouldn't have hit a supply block, he probably would have held quite comfortably. With the very first marine push, that is. And obviously with the second attack wave. I mean, uh, that one was only viable because of the first one, so... Don't want to get too carried away here. Now, just to clarify, Iba can switch on over to his main race, which is Zerg, when he's 2-0 behind. Or if he were to be 2-0 behind. So I guess if he wins this next game, it might actually make it a little bit harder. Because then, you know, the worst case scenario for him would be 2-1. Either way... Uh, we're doing best of fives. Sorry. I uh, accidentally fed fingered the hotkey right there. Thank you for noticing. Best of fives at this point in the game. He's gonna get carriered away. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't be giving this much power in Eba's hands, man. Allowed to make Protoss units now? Yikes. Maybe this can all go wrong. Good thinking, though, by Jesu. Realizing the situation that he's in and actually adjusting on the fly to what he's actually done already, which is 
also easily forgotten, right? It's very easy to just sort of carry on with what you originally had in mind, which is what I personally end up doing a lot, rather than responding to what has already happened in the game. Uh, so Jesu is 4.4k MMR. Eba is 5.6. Which, yeah, with Zerk that is. That's a, a significant difference. He's 4.6k with Protoss. Okay. I think if he were to play Zerk right now, it would be a little bit more one-sided. Yes. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, a robo facility opener. <laughs> so greedy, man. There's a marine gunning at you. He's like, you know what? Jesu doing the big switcheroo right there. Forcing the first SCV to build the command center and the other one to build the, the bunker. So again, the winner of this tournament will take take home the best of the trophies out there. It is real plastic. Listen to this quality sound, okay? Can you hear that? That's when you know you're dealing with proper uh, 3D printed um, plastic. Don't break it, Loco. Yeah, I shouldn't do it too hard. You're right. That's one hell of a beat. Thank you, guys. If this whole YouTube and Twitch thing doesn't work out, I can always become a... A beat producer. <laughs> I don't even know the name of the job. A beat maker. Yeah. I don't know if it's 3D. I have no idea how to make this, dude. A drummer? A drummer. That's it. A drummer. A musician? I don't think I should be a musician, guys. I'll be honest with you. For one, I don't really play any instruments. <laughs> yeah, that would probably be uh, yeah, that would probably be uh, an important thing to have. I have played the guitar for years, yes, but I never was particularly good. Like I used to play the guitar, and I had like guitar lessons and stuff, but I would only ever play the guitar thirty minutes up, <laughs> like leading up to the guitar lesson. That would be the majority. Like I would go every week, and I would then like not practice until the next guitar lesson uh, was just about to approach, and then I would oh. Anyways. Are you guys making fun of the foreigner again? Is that what's going on right now? Making fun of the guy who doesn't know how to speak English? Sorry. You guys don't speak Dutch? Okay, sorry. Sorry about that. Nice splits right there, by the way, where Eva. You know what's weird? You know when like you watch a video of yourself and like you hear yourself talk and it's very cringy, right? Or you like have a voice Donation recording of yourself confirmed. and you're like, oh my god, I don't want to listen to this. The next awesome viewer tournament will have pause music provided by Le Beat Productions Co. Thank you very much, Elder Rick, for the 1337 bits. What I was trying to get at is that like I'm very used to hearing myself talk in English. It doesn't sound cringy to me anymore. It used to back in the day, but nowadays it's like, no, it's fine. However, when I hear a recording of myself speaking Dutch, I'm like, Ugh, that's kind of, mm. I still have that feeling. I don't know why. Especially after I've been talking English for a long time, like today, for example, if I listen back to like the Dutch I just spoke, it probably sounds very like, Americanized or something along those lines like someone from America that moved to the Netherlands and is trying to speak Dutch I I make the wrong I don't know how to explain this Anyways <laughs> That was the quickest pickup maybe a little bit too quick Eba apparently Playing aggressively here not a Thor drop not an ultralisk drop, but a Colossus drop Maybe not necessarily the best of strategies, but he's having fun doing it. Bzz, bzz. This is not usually a build order we see a lot. It can be pretty good though. I know that Nina was playing this for quite some time back in the day. I don't know if she still does, but... Ultralist drops? No, ultra drops are horrible, man. <laughs> it's one of the worst strategies you can go for, but... 
Yeah, Colossi do deal a lot of damage, though. And they do shot the SCVs. If there's no Viking... Oh, God, the lock-on, the lock-on, the lock-on! If there's no Vikings out, it shouldn't really... Oh, my God, he's going double prism drop? Really? Now Eba is just styling on his opponent. There are two Vikings now leading the front. No supply blocks this time around, but not a whole lot of gateways either. I think the gateways, yeah, 4, 5, or 3, 4, 5, and 6 are all a little bit late. That makes this hold quite a bit harder. Yeah, nice. Interference matrixes have been used. Beautiful force fields, though, here by the Protoss. Interference matrix there temporarily disabling those Colossi. Can a Terra player finish off the third base in the meantime? It looks like it will be able to stay alive for a little while longer. Okay, one Colossus goes down. He decides to pull the boys right now. Those gateways a little bit delayed. Eva styling a little bit too hard. Eventually this army will be cleaned up. The Terran army that is. But at what cost? Nice move right here from Jesu. In the meantime, he's landed his third command center. Yeah, the Vikings were sleeping on the job for just a little bit. Currently, uh, 20 supply up though. Not bad whatsoever. Ooh, prism. Oh, God, so dangerous. So oh, there you go. Yeah, a little bit too dangerous. Vikings finish off the prism that the Colossus was in, which makes them both disappear. Jesu just sending his rally point across the map right now. Another Colossus. Oh my god, also missed. And I think, guys, we may very well be going into a game number three with Jesu leading the series 2-0. to zero. Now, if Iba would like to, he can switch to Zerg, which is his main race when he's 2-0 down. I don't know how... Uh, how much he wants to play Zerk instead. Maybe he's like, no, I want to double down playing my off races, but that is up to him. Nice move right here, though. What? <laughs> <laughs> that one Stalker just passed by so many... Okay, that was weird. That was a very strange little interaction there. Stalker really wanted to die, though, so... I guess it did target fire one of the low HP units down. Wait, there's 2.2 million Lannies? On Eba winning? How many how many channel points on on Jesu? I can't look at the prediction right now. 355k channel points on Jesu winning? 2.2 million on Eba? Oh my god. Well, it's a best of five, right? It's not a best of three, it's a best of five. So just winning this map is not enough. Battery overcharge is still pretty good. Jesu probably just needs to get his units over here. And I've got a feeling. Unless we get a golden disruptor hit. Ooh, nice pickup, Jesu! I feel like Jesu is playing much higher MMR than his actual MMR is. Maybe he's one of those players that like powers up when he plays tournaments. GG. That did not seem like Diamond League Control there, or, or Master League Control, rather. I think Master's 3? It doesn't seem like it. Nice. Alrighty, guys. We've got a bit of a switcheroo. Iba has decided to pick up the Zerk pieces. And as we all know, Zerk overpowered. Blizzard, please nerf. So, you know, this game is now probably going to be a little bit harder for Jesu. But he's got three chances. It's match point right now for the Terran. He's got three shots. Yeah. Will he capture it or will he let it slip? Three SCVs is a lot of SCVs. I guess the hatchery first. Mm. Mm. This is gonna be an extremely aggressive push. A lot of marines. And not a whole lot of terror or not a whole lot of Zerg. 
This could actually go south here for Eba. Are we going to go triple Rex or are we going to build even more? That's a real question. Ooh, we're even going Supply Depot over here. Yeah, he does not intend on going home. So, Zerk is not going to find out about this until the absolute latest possible time. Which variation of the opener is Iba going for? He hasn't started up an Overlord yet. Okay, he's going to go, I think, pull the drones out of gas at 60. If he takes the third... <laughs> <laughs> he takes the third base. That would be a disaster. Overlord needs to go to the pillar. Double queen. Okay, the Overlord being here, though, is huge. He knows right now what he's going up against. He should probably go to the pillar, but I guess he wants to be as careful as possible. Maybe a little bit scared even of, like, a barracks floating on over here. Drones are pulled away right now. Okay. How good is the control right here from Eba? He cannot afford to lose too much. Zerklings are coming up. SCVs are being targeted down. Nicely done right here. Two SCVs have gone down. I think there's still a third one somewhere. Wait, did he kill the third one too? No, there's still one. Okay, I was going to say. Spinecrawler, by the way, is building. Queens are out right now too. Two of them in total. He should not inject. Good. Yeah, he knows exactly what to do. So one of the bunkers did finish up. Marines at this point, though, are facing off against two queens and a spinecrawler. And while Terran definitely could continue onwards with some more marine production... This is nice defense here so far by Eva. It's very easy to accidentally still mess this up. Because Marines obviously still do a lot of damage. But notice how he's like saved up energy there on the Queens. I actually think he should have injected. Or sorry. Transfused with the other Queen and then transfused the other Queen uh, down as well. But anyways. Link speed here is a little bit late. Because he obviously had to pull out there for a little bit. So eventually it will start up. And once Link Speed is out, then all of a sudden the defense is basically done for. Yeah, Gas Geyser is coming up as, ho as, as well at home, right now at home here for Jesu. And what was a very promising start is deflected pretty smoothly. That was very clean defense. Yeah. He basically did everything right there as far as I can tell. I know the pro gamers get very specific about it. Cancels the spines. Nicely done right here. Now, all of a sudden, that silly supply depot there is actually kind of annoying. Um, so, in the end, four drones were killed and three SCVs. But most importantly, right now, what Eva has on his side is time, right? So, one of the barracks is going to go in. But these barracks are going to have to fly all the way back home in order to start up any tech labs or anything along those lines. Factory hasn't even begun yet. Instead, it's going to be a CC on the low ground. Um, yeah, this is a fantastic situation right now for Zerg. That was, that was very good defense. Yep. Did hit a bit of a supply block right now because he got a bit greedy. Oh, with the Overlord Scout on the other side of the map. At the same time, apparently the depots were down. Zorklings do manage to sneak into the base. There should be enough Marines to deflect this, but he's trying to target fire down a mule and he gets it. That is rubbing salt in the wound. Yeah. Jesu at this point realizes that there's pretty much no way he's going to win against someone when he's this far behind. Especially not someone more than a thousand MMR up or... Give or take. I think 1.2k MMR up. GG's. Alright. That was clean. Oh, dude! Iba's asking, do I still off-raise now? I say, it's up to you. And he says, I'll do it. Okay. Props to Iba. He knows he can do a reverse sweep. If he decides to just simply play Zerk. Doing it for the fans. Yeah, I think he should have made it 2-2 first. But apparently he's like, no, I'm gonna... All right, all right, all right. 2.2 million Lennies in the chat right now. Started to sweat. Are you feeling the heat yet, guys? <laughs> Loka tell Eva there's 2 million Lennies riding on his win. I'm not telling him anything. <laughs> okay, look. So, mechanics in StarCraft 2 carry over very well. However, Terran versus... Oh, my God. <laughs> that was a very quick clicking right there. Strategies... Especially for a matchup you don't really play, are not something you are necessarily too familiar with as far as the details go, right? So I, for example, I understand Terran versus Terran very well, but I haven't played it that much, and especially not recently. 
So I might accidentally just, I don't know, fumble up my hotkeys and just lose, right? Even though I might have better mechanics than the opponent, it's not something that's going to go particularly well for me. So, yeah. It's something that takes a little bit of skill. I don't really know exactly how good his Terran is. <sighs> but we'll see. Now, we did see a Terran versus Terran not too long ago. That was a bit of a banger. I'm sure in this one, we might even see a Liberator before the 30-minute mark. That'd be crazy. Oh, his Terran MMR is 4.8k. I'll be honest with you guys, I am starting to slowly fall asleep. <laughs> the caffeine at this point has well left my system. I'm starting to like, you know, what time is it over here? 8.40 p.m. Basically midnight. Time for coffee? No, 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 no. <clears throat> I'm a boomer now, man. I do notice this, actually. I, I generally speaking do the same thing every day, all day, right? Pretty much all the time. I have noticed that as soon as I deviate from my schedule, I immediately get tired. <laughs> my body's like, bro, bro, what are you doing? You're supposed to sit on the couch right now. Why are you still at the computer shouting into a microphone? Yeah, I've been eating food. My body's like, you know what? Time to shut down. Look, the trick is to never have a routine to begin with. I know a lot of people are very good at doing things when they don't have a routine. Personally, I know very well that if I don't have a routine, I get nothing done. So, my life is all to-do lists. Everything is to-do list, okay? Well, not everything. But I do put a lot of things on to-do lists. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 8pm, gotta get sleepy in the evening, gotta be on the couch, gotta go downstairs. Yeah! It's a sequel to the Rebecca Black song, Soderick. The Checklist Manifesto. I'm not familiar with that book, but... I do like checklists or, or to-do lists in general, yeah. Oh, very adventurous little reaper there. The little reaper that could. <laughs> Anyways. Third command center coming up already here for Eva. Very greedy play here. That does mean that action is on Jesu. That also means that Iba needs to be confident in his, uh, in his base defense. He's not going to have a whole lot of units available. Trying to get the lock on right here. Nicely done on the Cyclone. Okay. I like this little run by over here as well. How many workers can he actually get? The problem is though, that this will give Iba a lot of time after this is all done. Yeah, so two workers in total. They're definitely not worth your while at all. Now, what is he going to do as a follow-up, right? Like, he's supposed to be the aggressor here, but since the units have gotten picked off, there's not much he can actually be aggressive with for the foreseeable future. And now that third command center eco is going to be really sweet here for Eva. He did also get himself a Raven out. Raven right now goes across the map. I like it. A little bit dangerous, but has a lot of potential. Ravens in this matchup, by the way, very critical. We don't see them too much in Terran versus Protoss or Terran versus Zerk, but they have three skills that are all fantastic. One of them is the little auto turret right over here. All right, pretty good. It's timed, deals a lot of damage. And it can slow down the opponent quite a bit. Secondly, it's got Interference Matrix, which is the main one that you see most of the time in Terran versus Terran. It's like an ability that can temporarily shut down Siege Tanks. So it can shut down lots of things, but Siege Tanks in particular are huge. And then lastly, it's got an anti-armor missile as well that temporarily coats units that are affected by it in orange. And while the spell is ongoing, so while they're under that uh, Dorito dust, the units will take additional damage. They're like, all of the skills are fantastic. They're good in all matchups, but a bit expensive to get out. But third gases are taken early in this matchup, specifically because of the Ravens. It's good. Loco schedule, wake up, eat oatmeal, have coffee, record, have baby carrots with hummus, work out, play with cats, stream and eat baby carrots with hummus, get settled in a healthy dinner, sleep or repeat. You guys have very high expectations of me, okay? 
I haven't eaten chicken, or I haven't eaten uh, carrots and hummus in a while. I probably should. Carrots and hummus are, are, are a great combo, dude. I'm not gonna lie. But I ate so many carrots and hummus there for some time that I kind of got sick of it. That's more like it, Lurch. Yeah. No um, Medivex right here in his army here for Jesu. So Iba knows that he doesn't really need to be all too worried. Oh god. Gets one of the Ravens there. Gets another Raven too, though. Yeah. An eye for an eye. Anyways, as long as there's no Medivex here, Iba just can hold on on the low ground and he should be A-OK. -okay. Nice movement. Ah, scan just an ever so slightly too late. Siege tank count right now, though, six versus four. Yeah, you gotta be brave enough to counterattack with all the army, so Iba has opted to, to, ooh, opted to not do so. He's gonna go into a double armory here. So it's gonna be, uh, I guess he was already doing that, a full on mechanical play here. Raven running dangerously low on health. He's hunting for it. Yep, gets it. So another thing specific for Terran versus Terran is that siege tanks can shoot away further than they can see. Meaning that air superiority or having a lot of scans available, but having vision out ahead of the, the siege tanks is super big. That's what Jimmy is here for. He doesn't know it. For vision. No, but that's why uh, you do still see players making quite a few air units as well. Okay, here we go. This is something that Jesu apparently wants to engage with, but I'm not exactly sure if that was the best move. Yeah, he saw an opportunity and decided to jump on it. He was keeping his cool. Second factory coming up here as well for Jesu, who is playing a more biological-based army. So if you look on the other side of the map right now, Iba hitting a supply block apparently, but also making a bunch of additional factories. This does mean that ultimately Eva's army will be stronger. But, um... We're not quite there yet. In a head-on engagement, he might be okay, but... Okay. Once Siege Tank gets picked off for free, Sensor Tower over here reveals to Jezu exactly where that blue army is currently located. Jesu, only a little bit in supply behind right now. Okay, gets the siege tanks in the right spot. A couple of units coming in from the north as well, but not getting the best of engagements. Fourth command center heading on over to the position. Fourth command center for Eva also done. Counter attack right here with the biological units. Obviously, that's the advantage right here of playing bio. Those units are quite a bit faster. Hellions though coming back home. Siege tank will stay alive for now. Ooh. <laughs> Siege tank right there almost killed a bunch of his own SCVs. Uh, another advantage of having the air dominance is the fact that you can add on liberators. So liberators are amazing, obviously, at forcing the other player to unseach their tanks. Iba needs to be careful, though. He might be overstaying his welcome right now. I think the Marines, oof. They were thinking about moving forward there and stimming in. Marines are going to be sacrificed right there. Yep, nice move right here by Jesu. Forcing these tanks to kill each other. A little bit sad for the Marines, but... That worked out for them just fine. Hero Viking in the main base, killing whatever he can. Stepping up the multitasking. Well, he's actually gonna get five SCVs. Look, oh, Army Hotkey accidentally pulled his back. He's gonna get more. ay 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 Vikings do actually, uh, they deal bonus damage against mechanical units. Like, for example, SCVs. That Viking just killed, like, a dozen workers. Anyways. I guess it doesn't really matter too much if uh, Jesu can just kill the main army right here of Iba. Iba currently not sieged up. Okay, he does siege up the units eventually. Still has got an arc of units as well, though. Jesu trying to move forward. Siege tank over there running dangerously low. One siege tank on the high ground, too. There are units now coming back home, but there really aren't that many available. There's still three siege tanks on the third base of the Terran in red. And that is slowly starting to obtain him the advantage. 
the economical lead that he's been looking for. Four bases here up and running for Iba. Fifth and the sixth just about to come up. Now you can see it reflected in the supply count as well. 50 supply advantage right here. And while once again Marines will be sacrificed. They will clean this up all eventually. That was a little bit expensive. All right. Upgrades may be a little bit late here as well for the mech player. Planetary Fortress has a fourth. Well, Siege tanks obviously can outrange that. And now that they're in position, yeah, he's sniffing it out. He's sniffing it out. He realizes that something is not quite right. Jesu is trying to go in for a counterattack instead. Try and see if he can potentially pull his opponent out of position. And so far, he is successfully pulling that off. Siege tanks and red are going to take control right here of the high ground. And that is huge. Another take of Iba accidentally rallied into the wrong direction. He didn't clear those rocks. He didn't get rid of the mineral fields there either. So it's hard for him to actually get up towards that high ground. Planetary Fortress still up and running. But a lot of repair calls here for Jesu. Calm and collected though here in blue. You don't want to panic all too much. Vikings on the hunt. I think they're going to try and make this a little bit more doable. Good attempt right here by Jesu. Trying to get into the best position he could. But in the end, it doesn't even matter. Oh, God. That was a, a loving embrace right there from the, the SCVs. Except for that one siege tank. It was kept at one health, literally, <laughs> to send a message. He tried so hard and he got so far. One hero, uh, Medivac over here as well, pretending to be part of the blue force. All right. Yeah, at this point, there's infinite scans here for the player in blue. Whereas Jesu basically has to keep guessing. Like, look, he, he's spread extremely thin. I wouldn't mind seeing maybe a couple of Liberators added into the mix right about right now. Ah, you know what? He's going to keep trying. Two supervisors, one worker. In the meantime, though, on the other side of the map, okay, there is a big fight happening. A bunch of Marines are trying to surround this army from the top. But, yeah, there it is. Eva does win a game playing Terran. And that means we are going to the rubber match. I see a couple of you freaking out in the chat right now. Eva is doing the, yeah, win with all three races challenge. He lost his first two games playing with Protoss. Then he switched to Zerk, one with Zerk. Then he switched to Terran, one with Terran, and now he's back to Protoss. Which means that there is a good chance that Jesu is going to be able to obtain the victory. He's going full flex right now. You know what? I kind of like it. I kind of like it. The story is already really good. Nobody would have faulted him if he just decided to play full Zerk and just, you know smashed his opponent over the course of the next 10 minutes. You have 250,000 shuttle points on this miss. There you go. You don't mind giving up your 100,000 lennies for the underdog? Well played by both. Yeah. No, this is sick, man. The final match of the tournament. I've been really enjoying it. Thank you guys for hanging out. Happy to see the viewer count as well. There's so many of you hanging out here. Welcome. If you are new, I stream pretty much every single day. Usually between 2 and 8. Central European time. PM, that is. Don't forget to hit the follow button. Anyways. Thank you for participating and for hanging out and just supporting this sort of thing. We've only done two viewer tournaments so far, so this is the second one. They are relatively easy to set up, to be honest, at this point. Like, uh, the system we've been using, especially this time around, has been running a little bit smoothly. I think if I do it... Like, if we, if we set these up too regularly, it's probably not going to be that interesting. But, um, yeah. At least a couple of year would be nice. Like, you know, maybe three a year, four a year, something like that. Two a year, I don't know. But at least do them more regularly.
one per season. Not a bad idea. Maybe with some slightly different rules every time. So last time around, we had a, uh, with the very first viewer tournament, we had a rule that you couldn't be in Master League. So Diamond League and, a, and below, right? And obviously people that ended up winning were all in Diamond 1. <laughs> Not too surprising. Maybe we can make it, uh, I don't know, Platinum League and below. Maybe we can add some additional rules. We can do 2v2, Arkle mode, whatever. Anyways. Proxy Factory. Hmm. Little bit of cheekiness from Jesu. Very standard opener here so far by Eva, who now decides to go into the Twilight Council as well, which I like. Okay. Full scout in the main base, though. Yeah. Eva does take the opportunity right away. So he sees right now that everything's lacking, right? So that over, like the, the adept went over here. He knows at this point that something's not right. There's no third base. There's no factory. There's no additional like two barracks or whatever. He scouted gases, so he knows that something should be taken. He sh should probably put one on one together right now that everything's being proxied. So we've got a tech lab right now. Starport coming up as well. A probe is indeed going to head around the right side of the map. It's just a good old blink opener right here from Eva, which is pretty safe against most everything. Um, so it is going to be a siege tank right here in production for Jesu. And I don't think this is really going to work out, to be honest. Yeah, so it's found right now. Starboard will finish up. But I wouldn't be, wouldn't be against the idea of just abandoning this altogether. Okay. It's very dangerous, though. Going for the Medivac right now into someone who's opening up Blink Stalker. I think that is uh, something that Eva is pretty happy about. Okay. Yeah, this is where micro is super important, right? And this is like a, an acquired skill, playing with Protoss. Microing those stalkers and poking at the right time and using the blink opportunities. So far, it's pretty much flawless. Very nicely done. Get some marine as well. Blink at this point is done. You don't want to take too much hull damage on these stalkers. High HP stalkers in the front. SCVs are pulled as well. A couple of them at least. Immortal just about to finish up. Battery overcharge will be available. I wouldn't mind seeing a follow-up battery too, but... Or a follow-up pylon rotter. ay 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 Very clean. Very clean right here by Eva. Okay, while the siege tank now get in position. Bunkers here as a follow-up as well. Immortal right now, getting in range of the Siege Tank, so that Siege Tank is going to be taken care of very quickly. SCVs now also. Ooh, taken care of! <laughs> Bro! That was a little too close. And now the Siege Tanks uh, are not going to be supported by anything anymore. All the SCVs are gone. Alright, this is where the transition happens. Can definitely go for uh, a third base if you want to. Could also try and test the waters to see if you can obtain the victory right here, right now. Jesu immediately goes into a third command center. Uh, my MMR right now is about... Well, last week it was about 5.3k MMR. And currently it's like 5.1k MMR. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it! Eva would definitely smash me, though, in a regular one versus one. Yes. Mm -mm -mm. It's hard, man. Like, I gotta fight so hard for every, like, 200 MMR points. The game gets progressively harder. And then, if you look at, like, the top of the... Like, the top of the line pro gamers are sitting at above 7,000. So, like, you can be Grandmaster with 5,000 MMR, and the top-of-the-line pros are at 7,000. So, like, uh, even within those couple hundred ranks, the skill difference is huge. It's also not linear, right? So, anyways.
Colossus as a follow-up. We're just gonna have a nice little macro game. Can I have another slice of pizza, me? I, I think I do. Just a margarita pizza, guys. I was one, Ria. Yeah. A guy on the forums made a list of people that were patch zerks, according to him. And the list went something along the lines of Serral, Raynor, a Rogue, a Lambo, a Loco. I'm like, how I made it to the list? Mentioning some of the best players in the world, I do not know, but I will take it as a compliment. <laughs> Fifth best Zerk confirmed. Like, honestly, his entire post lost all credibility because he mentioned me. <laughs> like, genuinely. The post would have been a genuine balance wine if he didn't mention me, right? Like, he literally... Anyways. I don't want to self-roast myself too much, but... Yeah, that post wasn't particularly good. I've been at the same MMR for forever, man. <laughs> I'm stuck at my own MMR hell. That's the beauty of StarCraft, though. Most players are stuck at their own MMR hell. It's the players that aren't that are interesting. Like, Maxpex has gone up like 500 MMR in the last year. EBA has probably gone up like 500 MMR in the last year. That's interesting. People that are already pretty good at the game, then getting even better. Yeah, Serral stuck at like 7.4k MMR. Poor Serral. Anyways, drop into the main base. Protoss is currently on the other side of the map being adventurous with Stalkers. This drop currently hitting him unscouted. Half of the Stalkers or so get recalled. I don't think that's even enough. Pylon over here powering everything. Gonna shut it down. At the same time, the Siege Tanks want to get into a good spot. Nice scout right there with the Hallucinated Phoenix. This is actually becoming a bit of an issue, though, in the main base. Jesu going in for the killer move right now. He's currently got a 20 supply advantage over his Protoss opponent. And while his cheese hasn't worked out, he decided to follow it up with a very greedy third base. And that one has worked out quite well. That being said, battery overcharge, very powerful ability. Okay, good set of force fields there as well. Ay ay ay. Yeah, those Colossi are having a field day. How much damage was done in the main base? Not a critical amount, I don't think, but still more than it probably should have. <laughs> They're hitting the command center right now, or uh, the Protoss command center, whatever it's called. Nexus, there you go. Can we make a pylon, please, Eva? Hey, come on. Don't be shy. Yeah. Hey, can I just remind you guys that forgot that there's 2.2 million channel points on the line for EBA winning? <clears throat> oh, sorry. Wait, you guys hadn't forgot. Oh, sorry. Guys in the chat molding right now. This guy is embracing the glory of battle. Actually killed the SV that was building the command center with the command center at like 99.9%. .9%. Yeah. <laughs> that SUV had to just stare at it. It's like, yep, it's done. <laughs> That's the quality control SCV. The supervisor. Is it actually finished? Yep. The one who got to uh, use the scissors on the red tape, you know. Beautiful. Alright, so we see disruptors added into the mix. Disruptors, pretty scary unit. Purification Nova, very good skill, if used accordingly. The problem usually with players using Disruptors below the pro level is, uh, yeah, friendly fire. Doesn't happen very often at the pro level that we see friendly fire coming into the mix. Ay, 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 20 supply. Jesu losing a big chunk of his force. Same time on the other side of the map, though. Ooh, okay, Colossus goes down. Immortal goes down. Eva apparently felt a little bit too good about himself, but here come the Disruptors! Okay, there was a reaction at least by Jesu. that's something. Uh, here's Disruptor number three. Is he paying attention? I don't think he was. A couple of Force Fields as well, making it easier for those Zealots to close the distance. Whew. Nice. 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 Another hold. But they're becoming very close. 
Um, so yeah, disruptors do deal friendly fire. Most often you see it used, I guess, on zealots, but you can accidentally blow up your own force if you're not careful. This is match point, yes. We started with a 2-0 deficit with Eva. Uh, like being 2-0 behind. And now Jesu has evened up the or Well, Jesu is uh, forced to win this game. Oh, <laughs> just barely out of range. Uh, I don't like that move too much. Okay, well that storm was juicy. Woo! We had one game at the beginning of the tournament today where Iba was forced to play a Zerg unit composition that required three spellcasters. Uh, he was very good at that. So I do feel like this is one of those comps that like requires about three hands, but yeah. No, now you guys getting greedy. Oh my god! Oh, thought it was gonna work. Let's go down Florencio. Dude, it would have been nice to see you play in a tournament as well, Flo. Okay. Dark Shrine is a follow-up. Liberator's coming up as well for Jesu. Fifth command center. Building. I wouldn't mind seeing a couple of ghosts, man. Okay, he does have a few ghosts in here, but... Would like to see some EMPs, I guess is what I'm getting at. I will, Florencio. I will. A few zealots on the right side of the map. Trying to be a nuisance. This has been a ridiculously close game, though. Blink Dark Templar are gonna be the next uh, unit of choice. Now we're seeing a, quite a few ghosts and liberators. Uh, plus two. Actually, the second plus two upgrade here was forgotten by Jesu. So no plus two armor. That's gonna bite him in the butt. No plus three either for Eva going into the plus two first. Okay, couple of Stalkers and Zealots here in charge of cleaning up the drop on the bottom right corner of the map. No reaction here at all by Jesu until a little while later. Guess he was busy microing at home. At least he split off the one medevac that didn't have any units in it. But it doesn't matter. Only Jimmy made it out of that plane. Alright. Now how are you going to break this as Protoss, right? Sure, you might be in a good position. Sure, you might have a banger of a unit comp. But if they don't come towards you, uh, I'm gonna take a bite out of my pizza, but I don't know about this, Mr. Jesu. Okay, we are gonna fight right now? Are you sure? Thank you, Ayuma. Plus one air weapons, by the way, coming up as well. Looks like we're thinking about transitioning to watch the Skytos Force. Wouldn't mind seeing those units heading on over in that direction, but there's already units waiting. Honestly, this feels like a higher MMR game than Jesus' MMR would indicate, man. This guy is playing some fantastic StarCraft. Look at this! That's so nice! Anyways, Fleet Beacon coming up as well here. Or Terran Fleet Beacon. Fusion Core. Oh, a couple of nice storms here, though. Apparently, this is the moment where Eva wants to engage this army. There are Dark Templar in the mix. They've already blinked forward. A couple of massive storms end up going down. Liberators are still available, but there are Archons underneath. Not a whole lot of anti-air in total here for the Protoss. But he does clean all of that up, and there it is, guys. After being 2-0 behind, Iba first won a game with Pro or with Zerk Rotter, then he won a game with Terran. And then now he won a game with Protoss as well. That does mean... Uh, he's the winner right here of the tournament. Congratulations to Iba. Fantastic gameplay. Very promising player overall. Very sick series, man. Very fun series to end it on. I was a little concerned we're gonna get like a... You know, a completely one-sided finals. But just like last time, actually. We also had a sick finals back then. That was beautiful. Very well played right there by Jesu. But congratulations to Iba. Who ended up uh, winning the event.